but it's got like a billion guns on it. <laughs> it's, it's, got like, it's got like 30 different Gatling guns, and it's just a typhoon of damage when I pull the trigger. Except it breaks the game's audio because of the amount of Gatling guns. Brr. Instead of hearing, you know, instead of hearing, brr, you hear. Computer <laughs> <laughs> dying noises. <laughs> it's just the game's audio just dies. It's, it's so bad. But by golly, the thing shreds when something has no armor. <laughs> Well, that is all neither here nor there because we have a uh, plot to advance and uh, and I have characters to kill. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like no. <"Nah." laughs> Please no, don't do it. I have so much to live for. Well, I mean, do you have like what three castings of Revivify? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be fine. You got revivified. Actually, I think it's like five. I think it's like five. Yeah, like even that. still. Even still. <laughs> Please spare us. <laughs> so, when last we left off, uh, you guys left the capital city of the ALP and searched for the gravity crystal. Ah, oh, yes. You at one point encountered a small cultist war band with a man in, with a man in the center uh, bearing the uh, image of the elder elemental eye. Which uh, as a sort of, uh, he was a sort of standard bearer. Uh, flanked by two trolls and several red-skinned humanoids you later determined were hobgoblins. You also saw, even further west, another, uh, uh, another group in less detail. So you ran away from this uh, from this war party, gave it a wide berth, uh, even as a troll gave chase, and did some funky lycanthropic stuff. <laughs> you then got to the cave entrance, a cave entrance, and through skillful survival checks found a trail of large, heavy, uh, bloody footprint carving, leaving uh, trails of uh, drow bodies in their wake. You circumvented the outskirts of an enormous, what used to be dwarven underground city, but drought had taken over. Ascended a ladder, and the poem said, burning within a throne of rock. Uh, and in previous visions, Bordan and Nyaxor had seen a, a perfectly spherical stone resting atop a, resting atop a plinth. Uh, the plinth was still there. The stone wasn't. But there was a lot of, you know, dust and uh, stuff hanging in the air. You found several drow bodies, uh, one of whom, or two of whom, rather, had been uh, positively crushed, their bones pulverized into dust. You exited the cave and uh, performed a teleportation circle. Or actually, you exited the cave to find a one of those bear trolls waiting for you. Uh, after a pitched fight, you brought it down. You then 
you, you you then took a short rest and used a teleportation circle to bring you right back to the ALP capital. Upon there, you discovered all nine hells breaking loose. A chunk of the seal, a, a chunk of the, uh, another chunk of the facade of the academy had been uh, blown out. Uh, and you encountered several of those uh, hobgoblins, which put on a fearsome display of uh, martial prowess until you heard an echo, a familiar voice echo across the cityscape that said, it's done. One of them retreated, and you looked up to see Gordon uh, holding Night Sever in front of him with Lorenta impaled upon it. She, yeah, he, in one swift motion, flung Lorenta down to you, her lifeless body impacting the impacting the ground. Nyaxo rushed over to her, only to find that she has been dead for more than a minute and Ribivify would not would not work. Then Ordon proceeded to reveal that he had the gravity crystal and used one of its abilities on you. You guys struggled between rescuing Pippin, who had uh, who went down multiple times. I yeah. wanted to say <laughs> I, I went down, and then I went down, and then Pippin went down, and then <laughs> Pippin went down. <laughs> did a wonderful impersonation of an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> an elevator that can only go down. Oh well, no! You got up. You got up. And I went back down. down. <laughs> I don't think went down. But uh, he was finally reluctantly pulled away from the area. Uh, while uh, all, you were also dragging Lorenz's body. And then you looked up to see rapidly forming uh, a rapidly forming thunderstorm. And we will start off right there with uh, everyone can everyone oh, can go ahead and make me perception checks. That's gonna be sixteen. Seventeen. Sixteen, seventeen, these are good rolls. Okay. <laughs> well, also, I found this awesome Discord bot that allows you to type in, you put like exclamation point roll and then the type yep. of dice you'd want to use and your modifiers, and it puts everything into chat for you. Yep. My buddy uses it in his Discord to stop cheating. <laughs> well, personally, I kind of wish we were in... Roll 20, because that also has mechanisms to prevent that. 22? I'll be making it after all. <laughs> hey. 22. Hey. Hi. We're making perception checks. Yep. Oh, fun. And I didn't exactly remember just what exactly my health was, so I just gave it a nice round 30. It's close. Yeah, well, that's perfectly fine. I have no objection to this. I think mine was 39. <laughs> and that's a total of 15 for a perception, whatever the hell we're perceiving. 15 is good. <sighs> All right, so... 
everybody uh, actually passes this. Even though my spiky-headed little mind doesn't know what the hell we're perceiving. Well, neither, uh, why? Not, neither, neither do, do we. <laughs> I have to tell you what you're perceiving. Um, so, you guys are gazing up at the, uh, you, you guys are gazing up, gazing up at the sky. A thunderstorm is rapidly building up around you. And everyone, per, everyone actually sees this. The clouds are beginning to start turning. Oh. Right, as, right as you see that, you see a very strange thing uh, happen. You see a, uh, a lightning bolt shoot across the sky, and it starts off looking the typical blue-white, but even before, like, uh, about halfway through, the, uh, about halfway down the bolt, it turns into uh, the standard. Red. It turns into the standard called crimson red. Ugh, fuck sakes! <sighs> Senku lets out a sigh, and you actually just see an eyebrow twitch. He says. No rest for the wicked, huh? Or no rest for the weary, huh? Apparently not. Uh, wicked. Sorry, like trying to say something else. <laughs> Anybody smell that? It smells like bullcrap. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not ozone. <laughs> but yeah, no, better not be. Yeah, just one of Senku's eyebrows twitches at it. He just says. The sucky conga just doesn't stop, does it? I wish it did. <laughs> you hear a voice say, No, no, it never does. But you are not alone in this fight. I'll turn to the voice. Who the heck said that? Is that a silver dragon, friend? No. Darn. <laughs> you see a strikingly gorgeous female woman. Long, flowing blonde hair. Uh, long sword at her waist. A uh, um, gleaming, gleaming plate armor emblazoned on it the symbol of Harani. She she bears a shield as well with the same with the same uh, symbol. Uh, I just, I just. Had the most wonderful, like, oh, geez. And I found the gift, too. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I looking for Holy this? Crap. I can't paint pictures. Oh, I love the mask. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Oh, I seen this before. <clears throat> Sweet honey, I see. She <laughs> She looks at the four. Who's this? She looks at the uh I'm sorry, the five of you. walks over and uh, she looks and says 
she looks at she sort of looks at you and gestures towards you, uh, Pippin, and says, "Who among you is the second most uh, severely injured?" <laughs> the second most. <laughs> <laughs> looks at Pippin, looks at the rest. Who of you is the second most severely injured? That would depend on just how bad everybody is. I, I mean, I'm me at and Senku. I'm at full. I'm at 32 of 109. I'm at 30 of 104. Because I just simply didn't remember what the original value was. I really do have the oh, lowest oh, HP. I'm at 39 of 101. Man, Pippin has the lowest HP out of all of y'all. Uh, she, um, she looks to you, Perrin, and says, You, Mr. Uh, Mr. Elven Archer, please step forward. I'll do so. She claps her hands together, rubs them, puts her hands puts one hand on each of your shoulders. Lay on hands. Oh no, this is a whole lot this is a whole lot crazier. She looks to you and says I believe A he ought to do it. She closes her eyes, and you see like deep, uh, a deep upwelling of concentration and energy as uh, white as a pulse of white light uh, forms around her, concentrates, and flies down each of her shoulders, each of her arms, through her hands, and into your bodies. Um, you both heal eighty hit points. Who me and me and Perrin? No, Perrin and uh, Perrin and Pippin. Oh, we we'll both feel eighty. Oh, nice. That'll bring me back to max. That feels a lot better. Indeed, it does. Thank you. Uh, take like a now. take a greater potion, Sen uh, Senku. Thanks. She looks. She looks at. She looks to you, Nyaxor, and join me in the DM chat. Oh, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> so she looks at you, Nyaxor, and there is a. She is clearly not intentionally commanding respect, but. Her her gaze her there's this, there's a sternness behind it, and she looks at you as you're fishing, and, and she says, "Well, uh, take a put uh, take a potion." She looks at you and says, "You will do no such thing." Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to the others. My thought is. It you can see, yeah, uh, I actually just like stop for a moment, like. <laughs> yep, you hear her. You you all hear Justine say. You all hear this woman say, "You will do no such thing," and she is just sort of staring at uh, Senku, <laughs> and she's staring at Senku and, and Nyaxor, and she says, "The two of you come forward now." Senku does so. <laughs> He'll walk up. <laughs> she closes her eyes, does the same thing, puts her hands on each of your shoulders. 70 hit points. Ooh. Ooh. Awesome. Thank you. She then turns to she then turns to Nestor, looks him up and down. And says the Ravenscar dynasty is in good hands. Presses, Wait, wasn't... presses her uh, hand to his chest and heals him sixty hit points. Ooh. Is that like greater restoration or something? 
Some, uh, something like that. Heal spell. Yeah, make me. Make yeah, me I know. nature checks. Everybody. Nature checks? Nature yeah, or. Fine. Does one nature personally or what? know what that spell is? Yeah, that's is? a 14. There is no guarantee. Wow. I fat fingered that's a, very well. 20, that's a 26. That'll be eight. I wish I had the plus 67 that I fat fingered in. <laughs> yeah, I just rolled a 14. 14 is good enough. Yeah. She hits you guys not just with healing spells, but with twinned healing spells. Woo! In a few phases. Nice. 25? I didn't even know I didn't even know cleric was a class until I looked that up. A tw- yeah, you know, clerics are your dedicated healers, and they're really damn good at it. Yeah, I might have to rethink playing a paladin in the next campaign because cleric does more of what I want. I'm gonna have to do some research. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing though. Clerics are not just your dedicated healers. Clerics are they could be nasty. I haven't really played one in fifth edition. But, you can make uh, them re- hurt, hit really, really hard. You can make them heal a shit ton of hit points. You can, you make, can make them make do them both. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna have to do some research for the cleric because that might, I might want to play a D and D game as a cleric at some point. I would not. They can be it. really nasty. Yes, it really depends on how you build them. But as I said, as we've just seen, they are really damn good healers. They're the person you seek out. They're the people you seek out when you need a shit ton of healing or people resurrected. Yeah. I might yep. just like build a cleric at one point and use it during a, a one off or something. By all means. Or play it for the next one. Who knows? Yep. That's how I'm thinking. Because I'm playing a paladin right now. I might play a cleric for our next game. That is all up to you, man. Uh, she looks at you all, and um, she focuses. She she focuses uh, a bit more attention, not just on you, Nyaxor, but uh, on Stormtooth. And everyone can make insight checks. Sure, hold on. Let me check that. That's it's going to be insight. Uh, what track again? Insight? Eight. Insight, yes. 21. 18. What is that? 25. 21. Okay. She's not so much looking at Stormtooth, she's looking at the crystal embedded in Stormtooth. And as you go and put that uh, healing potion in your pocket, her gaze softens. And uh, she walks over to you, Nyaxor, puts her hand on your uh, on your dragonborn's meaty shoulder, and uh, looks down at that looks down at that crystal and says, "That used to belong to my brother. I believe it's in very good hands." Indeed. making sure that Colt never gets to these crystals. I'm not just talking about... I'm not just talking about this cult. I'm talking about you all, and she, like, uh, gesture... She, like, waves a hand towards all of you. And it's just... I have heard of your exploits. Know that you are following. Uh, you are following within the footsteps of Ferranius. Forgive me for my Ferranius. Forgive me for sounding arrogant, but you are following in the footsteps of greatness, <laughs> and you are living up to those expectations. Pretty honored to hear that. She, uh, thin, like, 
broad, thin but broad smile spreads across her uh, spreads across her face, and she bows to all of you and says, "That honor, I be- that honor, I believe, is mine." <laughs> you can see Nags are just like can it like. It's just like wiggle and spots like you don't have to do yeah. that for <laughs> but thank you. She looks she then looks up and says I think we've seen enough of that, though I won't be able to banish it for I won't be able to banish it for long. And she reaches out, she re- reaches up with uh, an open hand, and she clenches, she clenches her hand into a fist. And the dark clouds that were swirling, the red lightning, just are almost forcibly ripped apart. Oh, oh yeah. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. She's a very powerful cleric. You, she looks to you, Pippin, and says, "You have no idea, Master Padalaskopolis Bonzu the Third. <laughs> Thank you, then, Ash. How long do we have before that storm reforms? I don't know. Hours, minutes. We'll take what we can get, and we'll get these. We'll we'll need to get the sirens activated." Probably oh, need to get the people out of here. Get everybody, get everybody to safety. Yeah. The moment that storm starts to reform and the moment that storm starts to spin up again, those sirens need to go off immediately. Nestors, I think they need to just go off now. Right. Yeah. Get everybody out of here before it can reform. Yeah, I agree with Perrin. Let's get everybody into safety first. And whoever runs that siren can can like make it go off. <laughs> I can If we get everybody gathered, I could use teleportation circle to get them out of here. How long does teleportation circle last once I place it on the ground? Around. Around, but how long would that be? Six seconds. Six seconds. Not enough. Uh, this woman, like, uh, not enough time behind her back. It's hardly enough time to evacuate a city. Well, then we're gonna have to stick with what works. Underground is best. Lowest level in interior building. Those so should be optimal like, places. If I know. If I know Queen, if I know Queen Mira and Min South, they will have made sure this population knows where to go and what to do when those siren when those sirens sound. <coughs> I don't might as well just get it sounding. Let's go. Let's go. She says, "Where is it? I can see to that. You five have a potentially more important mission to take care of." That try is true. To, true. Try to cut that. Try to cut the head off this, this. This cult is going to. This cult is going to continue. Uh, cult is going to continue wreaking havoc. You must cut the head off the snake. Right. <sighs> the snake has many heads. How do we know which one to cut off? Probably the one that's here would be the best place to start. Definitely not cutting off Bordan's head if that's what you're asking me to do. Hardly. We can bonk him unconscious, but we're not killing Bordan. But the rest, they can die. Yeah. Never be so eager to deal out death in judgment. Sorry. If Bordan's if Bordan's up there and his mind's being messed with, who knows what other cultists we've killed that had families that had nothing to do with this? 
Indeed. It's true. We gotta think twice now, now that we know that they're capable of doing this. Can't just kill a cultist because it's attacking us. If we can, we can if we can break the control, then that's going to be our first option. Absolutely. Now she looks to you, she looks to you Senku with a, a, a gentle smile and says, uh, you who have been through you have, who have been through so much still we still prioritize compassion. This is an admirable quality. Never lose this. Thanks. It, I try to not kill everybody. Not only do we have, not only do we have the Some... cult itself to worry about, but we've also got, we've also caught wind of the kidnapping. A coda. He, his, his daughter was kidnapped. I know not of this, I know not of this fade coda of whom you speak. My sure. knowledge of this situation is fundamentally very limited. Well, let's get a move on. Yeah, let's get yes, a move on. Where do we, where do we gotta go? Okay. The Where's the issue is... hiding? <clears throat> she ponders for a moment and says, this is a cult you are dealing with, is it not? Yes. Yeah. Likely everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Indeed. Church. You can expect many you can expect many decentralized uh, local leaders, but they all answer to one they all answer to one higher power usually. They tend and she ponders and says they they tend to operate in secret oh, well away from well away from prying eyes. Large cities where they can where their uh, followers can blend in She sort of the you see her swallow a little bit hard, and she cringes a little bit at this thought, and says, "Look to the sewers." Yeah, I actually I just like shudders, shudder. <laughs> and you I can am see gonna Sergio be using prestidigitation to make it all smell like roses. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Press the station every six seconds. <laughs> Just every bonus action, every bonus action in the sewers. Press the digitation. Roses. <laughs> A wafting scent of roses. So I, I could, I could theoretically whip up some gas masks with some activated charcoal. <laughs> Create bonfire blows up entire sewer system. <laughs> well, uh, how about no? <laughs> I have a song for that. Okay, well, 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 let's get going into the shall we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you can tell Senku is none too happy about entering the sewers. <laughs> I don't think anyone is. No. I mean, almost instinctively, he pulls a clothespin and puts it over his nose. This woman looks at you and says, that will do you no good. Why well, not? May Heronius watch over our senses of smell. She smiles and chuckles a little bit and says, now you're learning. Yeah. 
Let's hope by the time we exit the sewers that our olfactory nerves haven't decided to commit seppuku. What is, what is slap sized? I have no idea what that word is. I don't know. What? Digitation, you create a slap sized non magical gadget. I've uh, never heard of that term. I'm looking at a different site. You create a non-magical trinket or an illusory image that can fit in your hand and lasts until the end of your next turn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a typo. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, uh... Also, you create an instantaneous, harmless sensory if... effect such as a shower of sparks, a puff of wind, faint musical notes, or an odd odor. The, okay, Duration, press... One hour. <laughs> Yeah, press the digitation lasts for one hour. I'm just gonna like make the smell of make the air around us smell like roses for one hour, or at least around me. <laughs> I could do that, right? I see no reason why not. <laughs> we can show compassion. Um, that's usually how we run. And if it, there's no seeming cultist or whoever. And we're just gonna deal how things go. I hate killing. Despise it. So, at this point, you turn to look at for uh, you, you. You turn to look around for this woman. She's gone. <laughs> did she just? Did she just pull a Ninja Turtles? She's actually just an angel. She doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to wake up the turtles. Did she just pull an inch of turtles on us? Um, no, not really. I wonder if you could use prestidigitation to like make like a puff of smoke around your person and then use that to roll for stealth. <laughs> uh, you could use it to make a puff of smoke around you, but it wouldn't be. I'd have to then use a bonus action for the stealth. It, it also would not be enough to obs it, it also wouldn't be thick enough to obscure you. No. It'd be like a puff of smoke, and then I use the bonus action to then like dive into a bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know you have you don't have advantage on that. In fact you have disadvantage because now they're looking at the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that smoke come from? <laughs> I don't know. What did you roll, Pippin? Thirty six. <laughs> Why is there smoke suddenly? <laughs> you can make me an intelligence check. Oh, intelligence. Senku? Senku? Yeah, Senku. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> 15. Fifteen, join me in the DM chat. Oh boy. And now we're gonna have we have to kinda choose who kill and who not to kill now. Oh, it's gonna be kinda hard with uh <laughs> Nyaxler's hatred for the cultists now. And Senku's hatred. And interestingly <laughs> enough, Senku might not like the idea of going into the sewers, but he has a little bit of hope. Like, you can see the faintest ghost of a smile, even though it's still filled with disgust. Uh. Eh? Like, he doesn't like the, the prospect. He doesn't like the fact that they're all going into the sewers, but he has a little bit of hope that things will turn out well. So, no juicy information. Got it. <laughs> Just a facial expression. <laughs> so, I'm a little confused on what to do now. 
This is unrelated. But I was looking up like ways that you could use prestidigitation, and somebody's wizard was about to be eaten by a dragon. So to get away with it, the wizard touched the dragon's saliva and made the saliva taste like poo, so it spit him out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh. A fucking nasty. <laughs> Oh man, that's just nasty. <laughs> you say nasty, I say brilliant. <laughs> uh, you can conjure a badge in your hand as part of a deception check. There's some cool ways that you can use it that I never even thought of. Or you know, you could just turn the air, you could just freshen the air while you're going with the fucking sewers. Anyway, I think we Which is what I did. <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> the air around you smells like flowers. For whatever reason. And uh, we all descend into the sewers, I guess. Well, yeah. yeah uh, there's a uh, there's a sewer entrance not all that far away. Uh, and no sooner do you prize it loose than you start hearing the sirens go off. Awesome. <laughs> and that's what Sen and you actually see Sen Q give a grin because that's his design there and he, he can hear it going to work and that actually lightens his spirit a little bit. Indeed. All right, in into the sewage we go. Into the sewage we go. I don't want to be here. Into the sewage we go. And they all ascend <laughs> into the sewers. With the same sentiment. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Nestor, Nestor uh, has a half smirk as he casts light on his, uh, casts light on Raijin and says, uh, you know, most most uh, people in our line of work have their first jobs down here. True. <laughs> Lark sure doesn't look happy to be down in clearing out this area, like but that. he's just gonna charge through doesn't with everybody. They like it though. Yeah. Every hero starts out somewhere, huh? Hey, you got that yeah. right, Senku. Yeah, but we're already heroes. I don't want to go here. <laughs> how, you don't how, always get what you want, Pip. How did they? How did well, they? Yeah. Stamp this air. <sighs> how, how nasty is the sewer? Um. So like one of the sewers, you know, you have like the paths on either side, but then the gunk is in the middle, or is it just it's a larger pipe, uh, where you do have you, you do have like a uh, a five foot path on either side. Uh, the gunk is thick, and like it is flowing, but mm -hmm. as it flows, it's making this. <laughs> you, you occasionally just you're walking past and like there's just a pipe that comes up and just <laughs> just the bubbles and stuff in the every now and then in the main flow there's a bubble that like swells up and then <laughs> <laughs> it's Seiku just holding his nose well around you smells like roses <laughs> it smells fine. <laughs> Press the digitation. It's, everything smells fine, dude. At least if you're within a few feet of me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some of us are within a few feet, but not everyone. Funny you should say that, Pip. Um, <laughs> you're. Every now and then you get. It's more a case of on top of all of the uh, on top of this wretched 
foul smell that smells like rotting food, uh, the stench of decay, uh, interspersed with some, with, with a faint smell of death, and, you know, random, like, charred, uh, charred bits of, uh, stuff, you also do get roses. And the addition of the roses is not as appealing as you th- as you thought it would be. Well, I'm not adding the roses. I'm changing the smell of the air itself to roses. That way, it oh, it just it just smells like roses. Yeah, right. Prestidigitation is not strong enough to completely com- completely get rid of this. Uh, get rid of this odor. Yeah, and Seku's just holding his nose. <laughs> Axar is just like, doesn't have that, like, have that very happy to be here look, like, but he's <laughs> just trudging along. And, he, and even Seku said, Pip, you know, I think the roses are making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not so sure about this myself. <laughs> everyone can make everyone can make a constitution save Pippin, I will give oh. you advantage. Oh good. Yeah. <laughs> constitution save. My con is a four. So I gotta go. A fucking three. You said constitution save? Correct. Nineteen. I rolled a seven. Oh. Lucky me, I rolled. I rolled two twenty twos. Kevin, what'd you get? Twenty three. Okay. How am I the only one bringing up the rear? You're not. It's just a constitution Trust save. Me. Yeah. Trust me, you're not. So, <laughs> Perrin. Perrin, you've you've skinned. You, you, you've uh, skinned them <laughs> shortly after you've killed them, and you're pretty sure if you think hard enough, you uh, you can probably remember crawling inside one in a blizzard. It's oh my! <laughs> it is bad, but you've you've encountered it rarely, but you've encountered it. Um, Nyaxor. Your draconic senses are over. Your your draconic sense of sense of smell is overwhelmed to the point that it practically like you actually shut it down involuntarily. You you're smelling so much that you, your brain can't process it. So <laughs> you don't. It doesn't really bother you. Plus, I work with parents, so probably used to that as well too. There's that too. Um, Pippin. Your uh, prestidigitation of smelling roses is working a lot better than you expected. Yay! Nestor and Senku, however, are oh, fluttering. A few, like you're you're down there for thirty seconds, and you hear this. <laughs> I was like, let me guess, they're retching and everything. Um. Nestor isn't just retching. Nestor, Nestor is projectile vomiting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Thank you, however, he's just coughing and sputtering. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, this is nasty. Yeah, and I'm not making me any better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's... That... Hmm. Ugh. But uh, that you're down there for a good minute, like another ha- another thirty seconds after you get down there, and after you know, you know, you've kind of adjusted to this. I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust my uh, my prestidigitation to smell it instead of like roses, more like peppermint oil or lemon oil. Okay. They can ele- the the smell of peppermint oil and lemon oil can help with nausea. Huh. And vomiting. 
did not know that. So everyone can make me another perception check, and everyone's going to be able to do this with advantage. <laughs> 16. That will be 25. Oh, say, um, 28. Actually, no, a, uh, a what, girl? A uh, perception check with advantage. Oh, substitute oh with advantage. 16. I rolled a 26. 16. I almost natted. 26. Sounds like everyone passes. Okay. You guys from... I mean, it's sort of echoing and faint, but you hear that you absolutely hear from downstream chanting. Oh, shit. I actually quietly size. Well, let's go take care of this. Draw and reaper. The sooner, <laughs> get, the, the sooner we get the sooner we deal with this, the sooner we leave. Indeed. Let's get this over. Senku has a hand on his hammer. Draw. <laughs> Forget a hand on my hammer. I'm drawing my blade. I have already drawn my. Bow. You know what the hell? I got storm tooth in mine. Better to have it ready and not need it than to need it ready and not have it. What? Okay, let's uh, so let's get in there. You guys start down the pike. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> the irony is, I was watching a YouTube video earlier today, and. The comment one of the one of the people involved in it made was, uh, "Mario can find its way into anything." <laughs> Congratulations! It's <laughs> 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 Anyways, <laughs> so you arrive at uh, a <laughs> circular uh, four-way junction. The sludge, as you guys are, uh, um, as you guys are walking, a bit more water is added to the sewage here. Uh, so it become it, it flows easier and is more uh, and, and is more fluid. Um, then you get to this large uh, circular four way uh, four way intersection with uh, wooden slightly arched bridges over each uh, over each pipe. And in the um in the center of this, for a brief moment, everyone sees as though like the center was being disturbed a little bit. But as soon as eyes fall upon it, it that uh, that disturbance, that 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 rippling, quickly vanishes. I'm sorry, do not like. <laughs> Excuse me. This is actually suspenseful. Indeed. So.
Not gonna lie, I've, I've just been looking through my voice mod, and I found some epic sounds. <laughs> <laughs> There's some epic music on this thing. <laughs> it's, funny should, it's funny you should play that whooshing noise. I know. Sorry, nope. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right before it does that, right, right before it that actually before that final beat starts you guys all hear this uh great whooshing noise <laughs> and uh <laughs> you see nestor get Briefly, like, you, you see Nestor get, like, uh, uh, his back arches, and you see a brief eruption of blood. What the? And for, a, for the briefest of seconds... You see the blood splatter on something before the blood just evaporates. Oh, crap. Into nothing. That's not good. Uh, Nestor uh, is... Nest Why is it always oh, Nestor? Uh, it's just how I roll. Grief. Roll hatred, Esther. Esther, are you okay, buddy? Hold on. Nestor, um, like, drops to his knees. Uh, and then his hands, and he's and he coughs. He coughs up a huge amount of blood that you know splatters on the bridge, and again just sort of starts evaporating into thin air. And Let he looks like, out now. He looks like he took a huge hit. Mm. Make me a uh, medicine check. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Why the hell not? Last night. That is a 16. Whoa. 15 is good. I said 16. 16 is good. That 20! Oh no, here we go again. What is it that we're rolling? Uh, medicine, medicine, if you want to roll it. Ah. I mean, I can. Uh... I mean, I, I do have the highest, high. highest I medicine. Have, I so. don't, I don't have like any perception of it. But I mean, eleven, eleven, not so good. Perrin, what you get from that medicine? Twelve. Twelve, also not so good. So you guys are, you guys go to check, and you're like, wait, something's in here that hit him that we can't see. Uh, Nyaxor and Senku, however, examine this wound, and they can clearly tell, like, it, the attack was in, the, the attack specifically aimed for the kidneys, a vulnerable spot, and cursory mm. infection. Nestor's already, Nestor's been basically cut in half as far as, uh, hit, as far as hit points are, uh, concerned. Ooh. That one hit brought him down. That one hit brought him down uh, to half HP. I, I actually was going to hand him a greater potion. Uh, thank you. You want me You're to burn welcome. A level, you want me to burn a second level cure wounds? That's up to you. Save it. And if you need a ex <laughs> little extra, uh, you can take a uh, another potion. 
very little in like healing myself. I got some truly grudic healing. I could do that. Crystal charges. I only got five. Uh. Nestor looks at you and says, "Save it. We're gonna need it further. We're gonna need it further in." What hurt him? Uh, whatever it was, you can't see it. Like, is it invisible or something? You don't know. Great. That uh, whooshing sound, however, has abated. Right. How? What's ahead of us? Uh, well, you're at a four-way intersection of pipes, so you could effectively go straight ahead, left, or right. Can we see anything in any of the different directions? Nope. More, uh, more, just more piping. Could we say hear anything? Insight to hear whatever we need to do to hear anything. Invest investigate for footprints that could work yeah survival uh, survival i can do that that would be more of a survival check i'll roll that that's a 27 okay might as well i mean it's a well, shit he's got house this. Luck roll he's got that's this a 13 <laughs> that's all a 21 right. all right so Karen and Nyaxor can join me in the DM chat. Damn. <laughs> oh, well. Hey. Uh, you guys don't notice footprint, but you do notice things that, uh, like, have that have been gently sort of almost picked up and moved. Like, there's, a, like, a small piece of, like, almost like a leaf or something that you can see the leaf and then see where the leaf was. And it, it, it was subtly disturbed, not by boot prints, but it almost looks like a gentle breeze. And which side is this? This is moving to the left. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll divulge that, I guess. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. Uh, there's no footprints, guys. I sort of uh, like um, like moves around but... investigating the area, and um, I'm noticing some disturbances disturbance. off to the left here. I say we go left. Indeed. And interestingly enough, you can see Senku basically almost mentally preparing himself to do something in case he gets attacked. Of course, you all know what that's going to entail. <laughs> so yeah, I guess we're all heading left then. Yep, let's, yep. We well, guess we'll head to the left. Do it. Oh, gee, I expected that to take longer. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait, really? Yes, really. Kind of helped that um, one person rolled a natural 20 and then somebody else rolled high. No, I mean, <laughs> I expected the character reactions there to take longer. Oh, <laughs> I mean, just like Nyx just like, like walks around, kind of look look around for a bit, and then notices the left side had like the 
the um, disturbances, and I was like, I sh- think we should go this way. <laughs> oh, kind yeah, of okay. kind of thing. Good job on that survival check. I mean, uh, <laughs> Mr. I got I rolled nat twenties like they're going out of style. He wasn't the one who rolled nat twenty. <laughs> I only rolled one today, so. Yeah. All right. So now, says you guys are a bit on edge. I'm gonna let you guys make perception checks with advantage. (laughs) All right. That'll be a (laughs) thirty-six. Oh, you know, hold on, I I messed that up. That's actually 30. I added up both dice. Whoops. Oh, so much worse. That'll be an unnatural 20. A 28. 28. 26 for me. That's a 26. I rolled a 19. Okay. So, 28. Yeah, I rolled a 19 and a 6, and then added 11 to the combination. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) <laughs> I rolled a 26. Nice. All right. My so, other roll was a 24. Nice. Sentu and Perrin can now join me in the DM chat. I think I'll be next because I rolled a 28. I almost nat it again. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 19. Godness. Yep, and then the next one was like a uh, seven or something. I don't even know. I think it was like a seven or nine or something like that. Depending on what time we end up, uh, maybe hop back on to Destiny 2 for a tiny bit. It is a good game. Yeah, it is. It is a lot of fun. And I love, I love the, like, the, this, like, like I said, the cinematics and the story. It's been quite interesting. Indeed. Beautiful game. I love the graphics. It's one of my favorites. At least used to be. 
<laughs> I enjoyed the first one a lot. I did end up getting pretty uh like level fifty or something, but then kind of got stuck at a point. I played the hell of it all of it when I had the PS version of it. Yeah. Oh, well, sounds sounds like they're getting juicy stuff over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what I'll get with my twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. I'm currently on uh, Space Engineers again. I saw that. <laughs> Oh, what do I get with my 28? <laughs> or should we just, like, do it here, then? You got a 28? Yes, I almost natted. I rolled a 19. Okay, I apologize. You can join me in the DM chat. Yeah. <laughs> so, I need you to go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, you. Okay. Uh, this one's Uh, 17. 17, very good. So, you are, you look behind you just in time to see a sort of rippling wave on the water, kind of like as though the top of the water is being disturbed by a brief gust of wind, and then it vanishes. This was at the very edge of the intersection you were just at. Then 50 feet later, you see it again, and then another 40 feet down. It's now 40 feet away. You see it a third time. And it's at this point you see that uh, Perrin and Senku have done the same thing. And Perrin is already knocking and loosing an arrow. So what do you want to do? Oh, let's see. I think I may... Hmm. Uh, I think I'm going to prepare uh, a fifth level spell, possibly. Might be the right. only one. Maybe a fourth level. 
get more of those. Yeah, probably a fourth level spell. Alright, what spell are you casting? Um... I might cast... Let's see here, Ice Storm might do something. Find it again. Yeah, I might do a f ice storm. All right. What kind of save DC? Does that, what kind of save does that need? And what is the DC? I think my save DC is uh, seventeen. Okay. And it's a dexterity saving throw. Okay. So he does make it does make the save. Ah, sorry. But it still takes half. It. Um. Is it? Does it half both of them or one of them? It has both. Okay. So two d eight bludgeoning and forty six cold. Okay. So two eight. Oh, that's a 12 there on the 2d8. And then... 46. And that's a 24 on the 46. So 36... 18 damage in total. Nice. All right, we can get back to the others. Alrighty. Ninja Turtles are here in a sewer. Okay, so Pippin, you and Nestor are utterly surprised when Senku, Nyaxor, and Perrin wheel around and before they even say anything you see like you turn around just in time you see Perrin have an arrow knocked drawn and being loosed and he's reaching for the second one you see Nyaxor uh quickly cast an ice storm spell and uh there's a brief roaring as this uh as a uh, a few squad of hailstones fall into the uh, fall into the the, the thick wood that is the muck. The thick wood? Yes, the thick wood. <laughs> like thick liquid, you know. Um, and immediately after that, you see Senku fire off a pair of eldritch blasts, both of which connect. At, at something, it's like you see these things. You see an arrow sink into something that's you know floating in midair, and it just stays there. And the eldritch blast, boom, boom, uh, expl uh, explode and burst off something that you cannot see. Oh my! And what about the hail? What about the ice storm? Uh, you see the fusillade of hailstones rain down. You don't really see them hit anything. Um, but... Actually, you would see a few hailstones, you know, kind of... Thunk off something. <laughs> or shatter. Shatter and bounce off, uh, bounce off something. If what's That's AC. gotta hurt! <laughs> My ace is 24. 24. Okay. Bong. So you are clearly ready for something. And it's the telltale whooshing sound that uh, gives it away. And you jump backwards just in time. You feel like this, you feel like this, brief, this brief gust of wind 
uh, float past your nose. And you can roll initiative now. Oh, no. <laughs> what is going on? Something bad is happening. <laughs> yep. I love the fact that Pippin is completely ready for it, and he just jumps back and dodges. <laughs> I don't know about completely ready. I rolled a 10 for initiative. Hey, that's okay. I rolled a 6. And the thing you're fighting rolled a 5. <laughs> well, better than mine. Well, it's 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 better than what it could have been, rather. So yes, this is very obviously hostile. Oh yeah. yeah I'm pretty sure it's what turtle. attacked Nestor. Oh yeah. All right. Perrin, we're at the top of the order. That's you. All right. Let's go ahead and take another couple of shots at it. And since we know where it is now... Uh, you well, find it. where it is. So... Perrin, you are shooting with disadvantage. Still 24. 24 still connects. <laughs> That'll be 21 damage. Oh, nice. <laughs> Second shot, though. The reason I laugh: rolled a nineteen, then rolled a one. Oh! <laughs> and when I say I rolled nineteen, I mean that would have been a thirty-one to hit. But no, it's a natural one. Oh no! Right, roll me a percentile on this one. Oh no! Oh no! Seventy-nine. <laughs> okay, it doesn't. It's not as bad as you think. Your bowstring doesn't even snap. Um, it does. Your your shot just goes Wild. very well. Um, had you rolled under a fifty, you would have had to make an. You, you would have attacked uh, Pippin. But yeah, you just see an arrow go sailing off into the muck. I will say because you do. Because you actually do now know at least the square it's in, you can Hunter's Market. Oh, I can't see how Hunter's Market. I thought I'd had, but okay. So. You said you forgot to Hunter's Market the first time and you said you were going to do it the next turn. I, I did it in between attacks, is what I did. Ah, uh, okay. I apologize. Because I did not hear that. Thing. Yeah, because I, I shot it and I was like, I've forgotten, so let me do it now because. Okay, I DM misunderstood and apologizes. Okay, so now it is Nestor's turn. And Nestor is going to um I don't really have a lot that can uh That can affect this thing, so... Oh, He's that's gonna... not good. Roll twice at disadvantage. And one of his big... One of his hits will connect, believe it or not. Nice! nice. Because even at disadvantage, if you roll two dice and they roll high enough, You can still hit shit. Although that does lead me to a question. What happens if you somehow manage to roll double nat 20s on disadvantage? You still get a natural 20. Nope. I yeah. mean it's a it's a one in a it's a one in like 40 shot. Oh, it's way more than that. Yeah, this is way more than one in forty. It's ridiculous, but it, but yeah, if you roll, if you end up with two natural twenties on disadvantage, that's a natural twenty. It's extraordinarily hard, but you can absolutely crit. 
Yep. No, my first hit damn near did it because I rolled an 18 and then a 17. And don't mind me while I wait for my turn in the order to come up. I'm playing Minecraft. Okay. Nestor just did 32 damage. <laughs> this is going to be another case of barroom brawl, isn't it? Uh, not quite. Not um, really. Or you're up next. Hmm? Nyaxor, it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> A little too much noise in the background. Okay. Let's see. You know what? No. I might cast Moonbeam. And thankfully, that's not a two hit spell. No, it's not. It takes it no matter regardless. <laughs> and it'll light that sucker up. Who knows? It might it might be not immune to it. <laughs> That's wishful thinking, Buckaroo. <laughs> Nyaxor, like, be very handy. Nyaxor, make me a... Intelligence? Uh, no, make me a perception check. So. That's a 27. Okay. Um... Both uh, Pippin and Nestor are right up near this thing. There is no way you cast this without hitting one of them. Ouch. Hmm. You know what? On a second of thought, I having think... Said that, having said that, strategically... Moonbeam makes a lot of sense. Because I believe it hedges out invisible creatures by thinking something else. Um, okay, um, Moonbeam. I know I can control it in its concentration, for, that, and it yeah. lasts a while. Okay. I'm looking there it right is. now. Concentration. Concentration. One minute. Um, silvery beam of pale light shines down five foot radius, forty foot high cylinder. Um, centered on a point within range. Okay, so it it affects uh, it affects shape changers. Not it doesn't. It, it's not. I thought it briefly it was like uh, an old spell called fairy fire. Yeah, wait, this, it wait, is. Wait, wait. I believe it is radiant. Damage. It is radiant damage, but it doesn't like. There's an old spell called Fairy Fire that uh, hedges out, hedged out invisible creatures and made it so that uh, you could hit them easier. But this does not do that. But it does. Spell, it does engulf the creature in a ghostly, ghostly flames that sends them searing pain, and it's a Constitution saving throw. My spell does cause them to uh, be seen. Hang on, what was that spell, Sen? Fairy fire? Oh, goody! Because that invisible person is about to have a bad fucking time. I don't yeah. have that, though. I have, no, I have Moonbeam. Yes, but do you have it prepared? 
I might as well. I have so many spells at this point. Uh, I'm actually... This is going to sound like I'm going to be a dick, but okay. uh, I'm not at you. Unless you uh, actually... Okay. I'm not going to... If you don't have it prepared, you don't have it prepared. You can... I'm not going to ask to see your li the list of spells you have prepared each day. I'm not going to be that much of a jerk, but... Uh, yeah, I really have way too many to, to fucking focus on. Like, you don't have as many as you think. You have half your level plus your intelligence in spells you can prep each day. So you have ten spells of up to third level that you can prepare. Yeah. Okay, at least rule... Would you at least rule C invisibility is good? Or no? Uh, yes. C, invisib C invisibility is okay. Okay. It's a second level spell, and I think I have one second level spell left. What spells do you have prepared? Honestly, I have so many spells in my spell list, it's hard to keep track. You can prepare up to ten. Well, I just don't... I Whenever I have my spell list, I just... I keep all of my spells I have prepared on my character sheet. I don't yep, add same them here. Prepared. And I have a little app that can tell me what they are, what level, range, what um, oh, yay, the fun. action, or bonus comes, action, or whatever. I don't do good in keeping track of large sets. And 10 starts to get to the level of large set for me. Okay. Which is why I just say... Sure, why the hell not? I mean, I get four spells in level one, three, and two, three, in yeah, level three, in future, three, three, and level four, three, and level five, two, and six, two, and seven, one, and eight, and one, and nine. What I would do in the future to keep track of it is write down your favorite spells and then mark which ones you want to have prepared. I and have... then cycle them through as you des as you desire for between rests. But yeah, I'm going to still do this whole sea invisibility thing, and I'm still going to root out this fucker. Hey, I got an app for you that that can if you got iPhone, it'll you. Uh, it, I'm know. not sure. I'm not sure if it's on Android either. It might be but on Android. It might be, but who knows? Um. But either way, I'm going with C. And, I mean, once my turn in the order comes up, there. I'm basically in this in in around. the circle, that's the app I recommend. Really good. Okay. Thank you. So we're still on Nyaxor. Nyaxor, it is your turn. Um, sorry, Perrin. You might take a tiny bit of damage. Um, not Perrin. Not, been, not per been, yeah. Pip. Oh, wait. I thought you said Perrin and not Stir. Uh, I, if I said Perrin, I meant Pippin. Okay. Um... So. Because Nestor got hit, I'm gonna do it on more Pip inside. I'm sorry, buddy. It has to be done. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> Don't worry. It's not. It's not gonna hurt you that much. You will never be forgiven. <laughs> I want to see if this actually works. Okay. Maybe we'd be able to find out where. Pippin. No, it's not that powerful. Somehow okay, it needs to make a constitution save first. That means you two, uh. Hit. Take a constitution saving throw, buddy. Never forgive you. Oh, funny. Constitution save? Yeah. And is it just standard? No disadvantage? No advantage? No, just bog standard. 11. So. And my save fail. DC is 17. If and fail, know. passes. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it passed. It passed. <sighs> well, roll the sixteen on its die. What Ouch. can I say? And there's no way I can use a reaction to teleport because I don't have that ability yet. Well, um, 14. Okay, it takes 7. Pippin takes 14. I still don't forgive you. <laughs> That's why I did it on your side and not on... on... I can't! It's not my oh, turn! My... <laughs> I don't I... even know where I'm at. Forgive him, bonk. Fourteen. <laughs> yeah, fourteen. It's only like two D eight. No, two, not two D. Two D ten. Fourteen. Eighty-seven. Okay. So. I don't like you. <laughs> I'm seeing. I'm trying to see if this actually works in our favor. Pippin's like, I have something so we can see it, and he's like, Okay, shoot, Pippin. <laughs> a little bit more right now because as this spell bombards you with uh, with radiant damage, you see this like ghostly pale white flame surround you. You also see it surround. Um, give me one second, and I'll put it in the campaign pictures. Ooh, a shapeshifter. No, it's just anything that it hits will have ghostly flames on it. It is not a shapeshifter. This is not, no. But still, its target, it's now visible for all to see. Yes. Yeah. You're going to see this in the campaign pictures. The heck? Oh, that poor lad. Oh, jeez. I'm not sure what that thing is. Uh, it's cr like that is elemental. crazy. Pippin. Yes. This thing's been made. You are, you are flanking with Nestor. Not only is its disadvantage, not only is uh, its invisibility temporarily negated, you have an advantage on it. My other question is, when was the last time I used my Warlock's Hex? Did we get a long rest since the last time we fought the Wind Elemental? No, I don't think oh. so. Did I use my Hex against that wait, guy? Wait, wait, wait. Did we get a long rest? I don't think we got short did. Rest. I don't when remember. Was the last time? Does anybody remember when I used my Hexblade's Curse? Did I ever use it during I think the it's been long enough. We used it against the... Uh, um, use it against the hobgoblins that dropped you. That's okay. That's what I used it with. Gotcha. So you have I not remember had, who I used it. You have not had the chance to recover it. Okay. Oh man! But this thing is in your face, and you are flanking with Nestor. You have advantage. All yes. Right. Get him, buddy. So I'm sorry I'm... about the damage, but get him. I'm gonna channel all of my hatred and anger of um of my Exora towards this thing. <laughs> yes. Um, Destroy the thing. Along with all of my anger for that hurting my teacher. And attack this thing with a vengeance. Yes. Fuel that fire. <laughs> yep. be a so, whole lot more, uh, this would sound be a whole lot more effective if you actually had spells. I have one. I do have one. And that first attack is a net 20. <laughs> yes. And then my second attack... Lucky helped me. No! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my first attack is a hit. My second attack is a nat 1. Even though I have Lucky, I rolled two nat 1s. Again. Ah, uh, oh, gee. <sighs> well, my first attack is going to hit. And I'm using my last spell slot for Eldritch Smite. And you did minute. roll with advantage, correct? Yes. So you rolled, how, what, four ones? 
Uh, no. So my first attack, I rolled a 13 and then a nat 20. My second attack, I rolled a 5 and then a 1. However, with Lucky, I am required to use... I, I have a choice. I can... Uh, so with Lucky, okay. because I rerolled the 1, I'm required to use the roll it gave me. So it's a net one. Oh, jeez. Uh, at least that's how I believe. Let me let me check. Uh, halfling D and D five E. Let's see, lucky feet. Uh, do do do. Where is it? Lucky. Uh, does it doesn't say anything about Lucky. I swear it's on here somewhere. Uh, you have inexplicable luck. It seems to kick in just the right moment. Uh, when you roll a, a one on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can reroll the die. You must use the new result, even if it is a one. Um, so I guess that would be up to the D and D's discretion, or to the DMs. Uh, that seems pretty. Seems pretty, uh, pretty solid to me. So, All right. The first attack's okay. 20, my second attack's a 1. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage, because you do connect with this. Both of them. <laughs> Who's the second attack hitting? Okay, so, um, I, let's see. So I do, I believe it was 12d8, 14d8, and then that's 4d6, and then... I add my so it's a plus seven for the attack. <clears throat> so that is going to be a total of a hundred and three damage. Ooh, hoo, 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 go, buddy! Um, who is this? Is he rolling a percentile? That is 103 damage towards the thing. Okay, thank you. And so, what about the nat one? You well, see this thing. in front of Nestor. It. Oh. I know. Let the let the DM describe. So, Pippin, you bound up, leap into the air. As you leap, your you you channel your. Uh, you, you, you channel all your frustration and rage into your weapon. And you bring it in. You, you, you bring it uh, you bring it into this thing. <laughs> there's a there's a nice explosion of force. And uh, the explosion is so powerful, you are blasted backwards. And you land in the muck. <laughs> <laughs> Could Nex or like uh, hold out Storm Tooth, let him grab onto it? Not the turn. Ah, turn. Ugh. Thank you, you're up. Oh man. Okay, I'm going to did that, did that use up the rest of my turn? <laughs> yes, it did. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh you. Oh, my bonus section. <laughs> Can I basically close in on this thing and avoid the moonbeam? Uh, and not still flank with next door. The short answer is no. You'd have to go through the moonbeam to get into a flanking position. Yeah. How about no? I'll just, I'll just keep, I'll just keep zappy zap zapping this bitch. Good enough. Am I making it with advantage or no? You are not making it with advantage or disadvantage. It's going to be a normal roll. Uh, 15 for the first hit. Does not connect. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be rolling 2d10 on the second attack, so I've basically done, I've basically done two out, I basically didn't even need to worry about that first attack, because I just nagged. Very nice. And that is a total of 11 damage. All right. Oh, 
I mean, you still got your second attack. <laughs> yeah, you know, if he, he missed the first one, crit oh. the second. Oh, oh. <laughs> so it's basically the same thing as doing two attacks. Yep. Okay, now it's its turn. Doesn't it and... have to take another constitution saving throw? Because it's its turn, and it's still inside. Yes, it does. Gotta pass a 17. It fails. Whoop, whoop! So it's taking the full 2d10. Another thirteen damage. Yeah. Okay. So it sort you, you hear this sort of like whooshing roar. Um and you Does see it in the area. I'm sorry? Does Nestor get an attack of opportunity? What? It hasn't it's moved. About, well, it's about to move. And so you see Nestor blindly swing, sort of almost flailing at this thing as it uh, disappears out over the uh, over the stream of muck. And uh, Nyaxor, what's your armor class? Eighteen. Okay. You feel a uh, a rush of wind over your head. And that is all you feel. Interesting. Did it miss? The soul is sucked out of your body. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you saw the thing leave the area of the moonbeam. The pale glow around it. Uh, the pale glow around it fades. And Perrin, you're uh, you're up next. All right, let's go ahead and take another shot at it. That will be a 29. <laughs> um, I'm going to come out and say you have absolutely no idea where this thing is now. Oh, N16. Okay, so you just shoot arrows blindly. Yeah, just... <laughs> So the first one was a... <laughs> oh my god. So the first attack was at 16. The second one, I rolled a 20 and then a 1. What is up with the 20s and 1s today? So I rolled a 16 and then at 1. Alright. So you're just... Yeah, at this point you're just firing blindly. Hmm. Great. So great. Freaking great. It's gone again. Nestor brandishes his sword and you can tell he is ready. He is he is readying in action. Hmm. Smart. Nestor, you're up. Smart lad. Can't if you can't see him, prepare for him. Can't see him. 
Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to use my head and think. <laughs> Could I possibly um, move my moonbeam to where I think I last saw him? Or uh, where do you think you last saw him? Uh, wherever, he, wherever he moved off to. <laughs> uh, you have no idea where that is. I mean, you can just aim it. Uh, I will say this: give me a wisdom check. Okay. Checks wisdom. You know, it looks like it could be awfully close to Pippin. <laughs> Don't you dare. And my, I got really good wisdom, so, so just wisdom straight? Yep, straight up wisdom. 21. 21? Join me in the DM chat. <laughs> Alrighty. Air here has been incredibly still. Um, you felt a rush of air directly next to you and slightly above you. Hmm. Thinking about possibly doing uh, uh, primal savagery now. Thinking of that. If I can get up to that. <laughs> it's Well, you have no idea if it's in the I'll, I'll say this, you have no idea if it's in the square that is uh, directly next to you, directly above you, or five feet over and five feet up. So you won't be able to do primal savagery. The only way you're the only way you're acting on that is if you move the moonbeam and expose yourself to it. Hmm. Don't sacrifice myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Yep. We can. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You'll see Nyx or, like, um, think about, um, what to do next, and then moves to Moonbeam. On himself. The hell is he what doing? are you doing? <laughs> it seems bizarre. So, go ahead and uh, make your constitution save. How many flashes of genius do I have left? Two? One? I think you have. One. 18? <laughs> Wait, you pass your own con, Steve. I passed my own con. So go ahead and roll damage. And then you have to make another con save. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. That's a 13. Take a flash of genius. That, so that's, that's, damn, that's damage, buddy. Oh. Okay, so you have to make a con save of DC 10. Of a 10, yes. Uh, so, another con for me? Or yes. yes. Yeah, to make concentrate for concentration on your spell. 19. Okay, you're good. So you keep the spell going as this light burns you. Uh, but you smirk. You uh, you you smirk with this triumphant uh, with this triumphant smile as everyone can clearly see the uh, the invisible stalker. Get him! No! And Nestor will uh, 
That's why Naxor did it. Because he felt the wind behind, like, kind of, like, behind him, or, like, kind of, like, behind and above or whatever. Above, above him, yeah. Yeah. So, Nestor had a readied action. He will take that action. Burn a uh, second level spell on Scorching Ray. Nice. And Pip, that was for you as well. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice my own health for this. <laughs> it's like I hurt Pip and it did nothing. It better be worth it now. <laughs> <laughs> All three attacks hit. Oh, yes. Ooh. 13 lightning damage. Nice. Indeed. All right. Pippin, you're up. All right. So this thing is visible now? It is visible for the moment, yes. All right. Ah, let's see what I can do. How damaged is it looking? Uh, you kind of can't tell. I mean, it's living air. I see, I see. <laughs> okay, uh, what can I do here? I really, as, as soon as I'm out of spell slots, I run out of all my options. I really need to do, I really need to upgrade my Eldritch Blast, man. How do you do that? I mean, I'm a warlock. I could just do it. Just, I gotta wait until uh, I level up. All right. I, uh, I stab it. Um,. Do I have advantage where I'm at, or do I gotta move? Uh, you have to move. Well, how far away is it from me? From you? Uh, yes. 20 feet. And is it currently engulfed in a moonbeam? It's currently engulfed in a moonbeam, yes. And so is next door. I walk over there, I'll be hurt? Uh, no. Um, it is on one side of the five-foot radius. You can... You can be on the out. You can be on the outside of it and take an attack. However, um, the way it's positioned and the way you're positioned, uh, you are a going to have to teleport to it to attack, and b you're only going to have the time for one shot. Oh, because you're going to have to teleport into the air and then fall. Actually, that's stupid. You will be able to take both of your attacks. I'm ignore that. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> I attack really quickly. <laughs> poke, oh, poke, right. poke, poke. <laughs> stab, 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 poke. Basically. <laughs> and they will be an advantage because right in front of right in front of it is uh Nyx or Yep. Nice. So sadly I can't use my movement to teleport yet. Ah, uh. But for now, you can use your bonus. I can. Um, over. I feel like it is. Let's see. How much damage can I do? That would be two d eight plus sneak attack because he's right there. Plus radiant. Unless you nat. Otherwise, how much is Eldritch Blast? Eldritch Blast is two. Two beams, a uh, 1d10. Yeah, it's better to use my sword. All right. I'm going to go ahead and use my bonus action to teleport. And then I will go ahead and strike with my Miracle Blade. Okie doke. And is this an advantage because, Nyx, because of flanking? Yes. Yes, it is. <sighs> Man, I really wish he was hexed right now. It's a 30 for the first hit. 
If he okay. was hexed, if he was hexed, it would have been a crit. Um, next one is twenty-two. Twenty-two also connects. Sick. So that is two d eight plus fourteen, and then I have three d six. One for sneak attack, two for radiant gems. That'll be twenty-eight damage. The radiant, the crystal should only do one d six, not two. I, I attack twice. Oh, okay. Okay, I apologize. All good. So I strike twice with my sword. Sneak attack applies once because of advantage. Radiant gem applies twice because once for each hit. So that is third or twenty-eight damage. Twenty-eight. Still a nice little chunk of damage. Yeah. I it's my brain is still wrapped around the fact that I'm not doing two hundred. Either way. <laughs> I still do <laughs> a heck ton of damage. We like, all do. <laughs> well, all except for Senku. But that's not really Senku's Senku's style. I mean, you should be throwing around buffs and yeah. making all you should be making the entire party awesome. Like, if yeah. you wanted to give yourself and like every like three other people advantage on say initiative checks. With what spell? Uh, it's called I think it's called animal affinity or uh, something or other. And you're you're our a... buff guy. You're, you're the AOE. I don't think I have that spell. Hang on. Where the hell? Enhanced ability, I'm sorry. Oh, that's pretty good. Enhanced ability. You touch a creature and bestow upon it a magical enhancement. Choose one of the following effects. The target gains the effect until the spell ends. Bears endurance. Has advantage on constitution checks and gains 2d6 temporary hit points. Full strength. Target has advantage on strength checks and carrying capacity doubles. Cat's Grace, target has advantage on dexterity checks. It doesn't take falling damage from 20 feet or less if it isn't incapacitated. Uh, in the research I've done, the uh, initiative is a dexterity initiative is a is a dexterity check, therefore you get advantage with it. Ooh, that's nice. And if you cast a spell at third level or higher, uh, you can affect one additional creature for each slot. And it has a duration of an hour, depending on concentration. Cool. But that's actually not something I'm going to be doing. I'm All going right. to be I'm going to basically be relaying information on the target's position to the party. Okay. Because sea invisibility is a wonderful thing. All right. So and I know these... it's me being kind of selfish. It's not being selfish at all. It's being strategic. That's I can kind of... relay detailed information about the target's position, angle, and distance. Before you do that, make me a... Make me a perception check. Dirty in... 20! Join me in the DM chat.
Uh, how's it going, Pat? Doing good. It's good. Oh, they're back. That's a 22 to hit for the first beam. Okay, roll damage. Um, max damage! Okay, don't even bother rolling the second one, because you kill it. Oh! Ooh. Nice. He uh, sends you preparing to cast the invisibility, and then he stops himself just before he only uh, he releases the spell, and he takes a full few seconds to look at this thing, and you see gears turning in his head. <laughs> he takes that. He, he takes that uh, uh, that magical energy quickly. Re. Uh, realigns it into an Eldritch Blast and fire <clears throat> smashes right into this thing's face, explodes in a, uh, in a burst of um, uh, uh, like a burst of light and everyone can see how the uh, like the misty fire, the silvery flame that was enveloping this thing isn't just outlining it, it's running all through it and all that fun stuff and it just sort of, right from those seams, begins to literally fall apart. And there is the, there is the, the slightest breeze of air as this thing just sort of fades into nothing. Alright, can I sort of dismiss this yes. moonbeam? You absolutely can. <laughs> Before anybody else take more damage. After Pippin damaged it, it had three hit points left. Oh, oh man, so close. <laughs> really wish that it's like that the dice hadn't really screwed me over like they had with that 20 and that one on the same attack. <laughs> That's the way they fall sometimes. You, you don't have to feel bad. You, uh, you were one of the ones who probably did the most damage to the thing. And hey, I got off a couple volleys too. Everyone we all did. did. So Nestor will go over and help send Ku or help uh, Pippin out of the sludge. And you know what? Why the hell not? Send Ku will as well. Oh, we're I, was already, Max, I was already out of the sludge. I was currently oh, falling. Right. Oh, <laughs> I'm currently like falling out of the sky when when the Eldritch Blast hits and he kills it. I just fall to the ground. <laughs> well, you would have fallen back into the muck because that's the only. <laughs> uh, I mean, Axer could yep. probably. Uh, could Axer like try catching him before he falls in? Uh, you do. You reach out your hand, and then you that's when you realize, oh, wait, I have to dismiss the spell so we don't keep burning. Yeah. So, yeah, you do that, and uh, Senku and uh, Nestor will help Pippin out of the, uh, out of the muck. Because we're buddies! Some of us are. <laughs> I did it for a reason. And it worked out. <laughs> not, not kidding. Imagine how hard. Imagine how tough that would have been if uh, if you didn't do that. I, there's no guarantee I would have connected. I did almost. And then uh, I sacrificed my own health to continue that. It was a strategy, and it paid off. If <sighs> Nestor claps you on your Nestor claps Pip on his shoulder and said. Like, Say thank you and be happy. It was a smart move. <laughs> it was. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Mm, I didn't like I it either, it buddy. Hurts. I didn't like it either. Sorry I had to do it. Here. <laughs> he'll, he'll hand him a, a regular potion. That's for the pain I caused. How much did so, you heal? 2d4. Uh, Plus, plus your con, I think. Or no. Does it add your con? 2d4 plus 2. 
Oh yeah, two D four plus two. It's gonna be eight. So I heal eight. You heal almost as much damage as uh, he threw at you. Yeah. yeah. This... Almost. I thought you only took like. Wait, yeah. You took like thirteen or something. Yeah. I'm still six hit points off. Uh, I could. <laughs> still bloody hat. Still bloody hat. <laughs> Um, I mean, I could cure possibly. No, I'm fine. <laughs> just hurt. Uh... You 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 sure, buddy? <laughs> fine. It just it just hurt. <laughs> he'll he'll pat him on the head. I'm sorry, buddy, <laughs> but I did it for st strategy reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Out of character. I love it when pe when uh, party mem when parties have to do that. <laughs> it's like out, 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 it, it, out. <laughs> so you guys continue down the tunnel. Um. And you come to a uh, a ladder with another manhole. You could continue down the tunnel, or you could poke your heads up. Hmm. Could we do another investigation? Uh, you don't need to. You can clearly still hear the chanting coming from down this tunnel, and it is I, getting. I was gonna say, I would, I, I would be very surprised if they're on the surface. Let's continue okay. down the tunnel. I mean, I'm gonna peek my head. You're gonna peek your head up. Damn yeah. it, Pippin. Okay. Oh, Do you no. I mean, somebody can stop him, but. <laughs> No one stops him. TM chat room, please. Sure. Uh, stop him. All right. So, uh, Stenku just says, no, Pippin, yeah. that's probably not the best idea. Nestor okay. looks at him and shrugs and looks at you, Stenku, and shrugs and says, why not? I'm not. I mean, unless you're going to, like, <laughs> grab me and stop me from... Opening this manhole, I'm gonna open up the manhole. I'm curious. <sighs> good, good, yeah, good luck with that, Senku. Yeah. DM chat. This is probably not a good idea. Okay, why is it not? Confusion. It's not letting me join the dungeon master chat. Oh, what? <laughs> Weird. I see now the channels have been got flipped around. That was funky. Weird. What? What? That is weird. Dark For a moment, I was like, everyone was gonna say, "Why are we all in the Dungeon Master channel?" <laughs> I have misgivings about this. You don't know, to be honest. Why is Pippin peeking his head up? Because he's curious. I just hope his curiosity doesn't land us in a world of hurt. And you think we're already not hurting. <laughs> I literally sacrificed my own health earlier. And you know that that moonbeam sends searing pain. It is not pleasant. Yeah, I, I'd be worried if it was.
This is just... It's just, I'm sorry, uh, man, I hate it when this happens. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen, bud. Just sit tight. He's our most stealthiest little guy. He'll be I safe. Know, I know, it's just, I worry, okay? I worry too! <laughs> He's my buddy! You all are! Never tempt me or anxious. I'm just concerned. So many elements that I've collected thus far. I just hit a duck with its own egg. Okay. You guys, uh, you begrudgingly let Pippin climb up. You see him poke his head up for, like, he's holding on to the manhole cover as he, like, pokes his head up for a second. He looks around. The one thing that you guys can hear is the sirens are still going off. And you see, you see Pippin shift his position a little bit to just get just a slightly better view. And you then sort of hear him yell at the yell fades as he is ripped away. Damn and it. Out of sight. Oh, oh, damn it. He got sucked up, didn't he? Uh, you don't know. Do we hear wind rushing? Um,. For just a second, you do. 
Shit. Uh. Uh, so he got sucked up. There's nothing we can do about it either. Could we Nestor, not like Nestor looks at you, Nyaxor, and says, Nothing we can do about it, my ass. Oh and boy. you see him turn into speed lines that uh you've seen <laughs> uh you've seen Pippin do and he teleports. Oh, uh, um, could I, could I use my hidden pass or something? You could. I think I could use, uh, I think I'll use a hidden path. Okay, and teleport so with you guys. You teleport as well. Stenku, Perrin, you gonna be climbing up the ladder? Don't have much option, I need... Don't have yeah. much option either. Oh, great. Thank you, okay. Pippin. So, I'm going to drag three fourths back up here. All right. You, you got stuck up, didn't you? No. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> you see. Uh, everyone gets to the top. Pippin, you look down and you see Nestor sort of appear, uh, followed closely by Nyaxor. And just a few seconds later, Perrin is first up the manhole, followed by Senku. And you all see Pippin being held aloft by a grayish black tendril tendril of cloud grab him and he is like 20 feet up right now <laughs> grabbing's a little bit out of the question <laughs> right I have web what is that gonna do wonderful but uh, is it hurting Pippin right now uh, it feels like it's about to. It feels like it's crushing your... Alright, I'm okay. just gonna teleport away. Um, hold on. Teleport below them. No, okay. Give me a moment. Save me. Everyone sees this. Come on. That's the wrong thing. Oh, how I wish I had fly. I do a fly. Oh, wait. You can fly, can't you? Yeah, this thing's just a minor inconvenience. Don't worry about it. <laughs> how big is this tornado? The image. Ah. Uh, Danger noodle. It's not really a tornado that I'm being grabbed by. Well, yeah, it is a tornado. Fundamentally, yes, he's right. It's ah. a danger noodle, though, probably. Mm. This particular one, yes. Uh, but what you all see in the sky is another one of those evil faces. That. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Back in the manhole. Everyone grab Pippin and head back in the manhole. Your face is we, so... we, we really can't since he's 20, 20 feet above feet us. 20 in the air. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, can right. you guys give me a hand? Could I teleport up there? 
Or do you I have could. to be on the ground? I mean, you could, but Pippin can do a free action. <laughs> I don't um, know why he's not doing it yet. Another thing you guys hear as you arrive, right here, the air is still. Oh, crap. But you hear a, you, you hear a roar, you hear ro a, a roaring sound, and it's changing the way it's changing tone and uh, speed very rhythmically and quickly. And everyone needs to make me an insight check. Oh, shit. Insight. Insight? I don't like 15. Insight. 14. Uh. Insight, I have plus three and insight. It's going to be 13. Uh, you don't have to make this roll. You already did. Oh. Uh, dirty 20. <laughs> A dirty. Uh, nah. You can't shake. Looking at those eyes in the clouds, you can't shake. You can't help but shake the feeling that this wind sounds like laughter. I got something. I actually kind of like snarl a little bit and start a low growl. Um, shoe squat objects weighing t one to five pounds within range of decision being worn or carried. The object flies in a straight line up to 90 feet in the direction you choose before falling to the ground, stopping early if it impacts the solid surface. I mean, I could theoretically use rope. What are you trying to do? It'd be like a lasso. But Lasso? then again, it'd be being carried, so that wouldn't work. Um, well, you know what? At this point... Well, actually, first, uh, Nyaxor? Yes? I'm going to require you to make a dex, oh, crap. Maybe dexterity save, yes. Just Nyx or I got lightning. a pretty I got pretty good uh, pretty good dex. Uh nineteen. Okay, you pass. Yes. You take uh, nine lightning damage. Ooh. As one of these red lightning bolts just sort of like the eyes narrow ever so, like you snarl, see the eyes visibly narrow, if only slightly, and <laughs> lightning bolt. Mm -hmm strikes down right at your feet. Like, I'm sorry I got y'all into this mess. Oh, that gets halved because it's lightning. I already halved it. Okay, 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 okay. It would have been 18 before your resistance. And... In this, the roar of this wind in a long, slow, angry tone, it just says, You will be silent, Dragonborn, or you will be silenced. I actually yell back in a loud, draconic, sort of like roar, I will not let him go. <laughs> oh dear. He, he, oh dear. He's next door. Nyx source passed. <laughs> the the wind, if you will, res uh, almost responds. It, the, the pitch rises ever so slightly. He says, you 
dare to order me? Looks like we're rocking and rolling. That's an order. I demand. Give me my friend back. Oh boy. Nyaxor is really pissed. <laughs> I don't think you understand the meaning of that word anymore. <laughs> I don't think I do. Oh, hush you! <laughs> Sometimes sacrifices have to be done. Also, for the DM, I can kind of see Nestor jumping in to save his butt. Nestor jumping in to save his buddy by basic a lightning bolt coming down. Nestor grabs his crystal. <laughs> and does an avatar redirect. <laughs> um, make me an insight check, Senku. <laughs> Well, that happened. What? And that 20? Yep. <laughs> Says the one I always do it. You're doing it tonight. DM chat, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're still butt hurt about that, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sometimes a little sacrifice is, is needed to have advantage. <laughs> I literally took out some of my health on my <laughs> own <laughs> spell on myself. Her, not me. <laughs> it's kind of funny. He's like butthurt about it. It's like, oh! <laughs> And the actual is like, oh! It's like, oh, hush. <laughs> um, you demand, you, you say that, that's not an order, it's a demand. Um, you hear this wind respond, this one is not very intelligent. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Pippin kind of looks up and goes, "You think he shot me with the with the moonbeam?" I did it for reasons, and it helped out. But being butthurt about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have more intelligence than you. Nyx, uh, Nyx, or what's your armor class? 18. <laughs> 18? Okay. This thing looks at you. you. You feel the gaze focused upon you, at least just a little bit. And says, you should be careful what you ask. Just give him back. Very well. Pippin. You feel yourself being rocketed up at great speed. Oh, God. And Just keep those. So, you feel yourself being. You're surround you you the rest of you you see him disappear through the cloud base. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Senku readies the spell known as Feather Ah, uh, guys. <laughs> Don't worry. I could use I could I can cast Feather Fall as a bonus action without oh, a second. Guys, does anything. this does this remind you of something? And hmm? think of that dream? Oh no. That's what it reminds me. Pippin, Pippin's just gonna, you know, 
fall out of the sky. He just he just has like an umbrella and he just slowly <laughs> floating down. I'm very talking, He's just like, like <laughs> the thing's just like what the heck? I just eaten you. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> So <laughs> that that is that, that is hilarious. <laughs> I love that. It's like <laughs> so, a spoonful of sugar. Like a few seconds later, everyone sees Pippin emerge from the clouds. He is hurtling towards the ground. Now, I'm, I'm gonna get bonus under bonus him action. and catch him. I'm gonna use my I don't care. To, I'm gonna use my bonus action to cast Feather Falling. Okay. From uh, my boots. Okay, excellent. Now, how? I probably will uh, still take damage from this. <laughs> I need to see how something works first. Go for it. Up to five falling creatures within range. A falling creature's rate of descent slows to 60 feet per round until the spell ends. If the creature lands before the spell ends, it takes no falling damage and can land on its feet and the spell ends for that creature. I'm, I'm trying to remember falling damage. I know it's like D6 per 10 feet, I want to say. Yep. But with, but with feather falling. That would be uh, the case if it worked. Well, I have, uh, let's see. Allows the wearer to simultaneously cast a jump spell and feather falling spell at the same time. I'm aware, but uh, you go to feel, you, you go to uh, produce those effects and you feel magic interfere with it as though they've been as though the effect has been countered. Can I teleport? Uh, do you have a teleport that's not a bonus action? Yeah. I want it's a full action. Okay, then yes. Do you have any Oh yeah, you have the you have the 30 foot jump with the uh with the flicker, with the boots as well. Yep. Oh, okay. So, I think I'm just, I'm just gonna. Like he's gonna hit the ground and the poof. I'm right behind you guys. What's wrong? Why do you guys look so scared? Wouldn't he still take damage though? Nope. No, not oh. from teleporting. Okay. Nope. <laughs> I could I could use it. I could use it as a fr I could use it as an action for free. At once per long rest, or whenever, or at like it refreshes every long rest, or after I use a different teleport effect. And I rarely use it. It's just such a nice thing to have, though. <laughs> <laughs> Despite how frustrated I was with it at first, it's become one of my favorite things to have. <laughs> I copied the uh, the, the conjur conjuration wizard class yeah. feature. Okay, I was I was going to. Sacrifice a lot of my health to catch him, but <laughs> I was about to burn a first level spell. I have to catch him. Is, you know, when when Sen said I got picked up, I'm like, oh, okay, not a problem. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> worried at all. <laughs> <laughs> now let's head back down the manhole. Unless we want to deal with that thing, it, yeah. Nestor, not even looking at you since. How? Me? No, not you. Not, not it, It's understand. a bit of an out of character thought. Oh, okay. That. So you guys very quickly descend back down, but as you do, um, you see like several blocks away, um. <laughs> A total of three tornadoes tearing oh, through the uh, oh, tearing through different parts of the city. Oh no! Oh, 
And the sirens are still going. The sirens are still going, yes. All right. So you guys get back down into the sewer. Where uh, Senku looks at Pippin and goes, Really, man? It was fun. You got to do it. <laughs> that was not fun. We all won. <laughs> actually, it's so just like pretty up there, though. You can see everything. <laughs> I'm actually just like shake his head. <laughs> yeah. <but that's sighs> hot, Come on, dude. Come on. You admit it. That, you would have loved being up that high. Maybe if it were in a controlled manner. Not with the stunt you just pulled. Okay, okay. I okay. I would. Have we were both pretty high worried high. about you. That's we fair. all were. I, I did go pretty high. Maybe if we could take that ride in an airship, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But not an express Ooh, elevator. I should have one mile in the air. We don't have enough gold for that yet, but that'd be pretty cool. Uh. It's like, what, 50,000 gold for an air? I can't have them throw a 50,000 gold airship. That'd be ridiculous. Save city first, argue later. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what we're doing? <laughs> right. Save city first, argue later. Got it. So, you continue... You continue down the sewer pipe eventually um you see uh several you see the sewage being channeled and diverted around another one of these large cisterns by walls of force is what you can gather because the way like you can't see them un unless, like, a wave comes along and sloughs up against something invisible. Let me use the restroom. I'll be right back. Actually, yeah, let's take a small break. I gotta use bathroom, too. Okay. Bathroom break. Yep. <laughs> let's do that. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. I have returned and rolled a net 20 on my hydration check. What all did I miss? Nothing other than me trying not to fall asleep. Okay. Then what did I miss? I had to leave partly through the description, so... Could you fill me in, please? Nobody's here because everybody went and did stuff. Wait, seriously? So I'm the only one here, Ben. And you. Yeah. Oh, this is embarrassing. 
I go to leave and suddenly the whole party fucks off. Okay, I go to use the restroom and suddenly the whole party fucks off. Did Sen have to feed his cat? I don't know. Well, probably he used the restroom and had to feed his cat. Knowing his main coon. Okay. Hi, Thunder. Nice to see you're back. Yep. <sighs> Sorry for getting so frustrated, though. I actually was irritated. No, we're playing our characters. It's fine. Well, I think you might have gotten a little too into it. Sewer falls in, you all die. Yeah. <laughs> <Aha>, very funny. <laughs> Pat, did I hear you right? You're trying to avoid falling asleep or something? Yeah, I'm getting a bit tired tonight. Okay. Well, don't feel obligated to stick around. If you're if uh, you're crashing, uh, don't worry if you got to leave a leave a little early. All right. Boy, everybody's tired tonight. <laughs> I'm not. I'll be tired Friday. Why? What's happening Friday? Uh, I'm used to going to sleep at like 2 or 3 a.m. And I have to be up at 9.30. Mm. Ouch. Yeah. Friday is the one day of the week I have an early shit. So if I hear you right, it means the DM is rolling a nat one on his sleep check. Indeed. Through no fault of his own. It's more like the schedule check. That's a better one. So I think three is the only one who's not back right now. Am I right? Yeah, yes, I'm all right. right. I went to use the restroom and get my soda. Yeah, I think you were the first one back. Except for Pat, who never left. Mm -hmm. what? There he is. Hi, oh. Pepin. Hello. Okay, so you guys um, start to notice that uh, sewage is sort of being diverted by what you can only assume to be walls of force because the the stuff is just sort of lapping up and being diverted by something that some invisible barrier the chanting grows louder oh dear oh my So, oh boy! At this point, uh, what do you guys do? Go towards the chanting, obviously. Yeah. I think we're all gonna go to the chanting. Okay, but I, I suppose I meant to say, are you taking, are are you taking measures to conceal yourselves, or are you just gonna rush in, uh, weapons drawn, uh? I mean, Screaming first we should surprise. first we should survey the situation if there is yeah. a way to do that. I uh, could yeah. could possibly stealth. 
Nestor puts his hand on your shoulder, Nyaxor, and says, I think we should leave that to uh, to the experts in that field, and he gestures towards Perrin and Pippin. <laughs> yep, I'm going to roll a 28 on stealth. <laughs> Only a 28. <laughs> buddy, buddy. <laughs> that's what? actually a natural 20. That's a, that's a net 20 for you? Yep. Are we, do we have advantage on our stealth? You do not. Okay, that's a 23. Sadly, it's not as much as I thought it was, but... So... You, t- uh, Pippin, you make that uh, sort of quick joke, and then you realize that. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, crap. Perrin's good. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's stuff to be. Uh, um, y- y- you just really, you just, just now learn not to be dismissive of Perrin's skills. Indeed, parents pretty good at this. So, the Thank two you. of you sneak up to the edge of this cistern. Uh, it kind of goes into a uh, a a deep bowl shape, roughly uh, thirty feet deep. So you're looking down at the the center of this thing from 30 feet up, and it's maybe 60 feet uh, 60 feet across at the top. There are uh, actually better idea. Perrin, Pippin, DM chat. <laughs> oh dear.
Just awkward silence. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching the scene from Aladdin. Oh, hi. So, there we go. <laughs> Harry and Pippin sneak off and they pull, like, they pull a Batman. You know, you, they're there, you turn around, you say something, you turn back, and they're gone. And you know they're stealthing. And it's a case of, you know, they're okay because shit hasn't happened yet. Like, nothing's happened, so they must be okay. But they're gone, you know, almost four minutes. Axor trusts them, so he's he's worried, but no. not as much as Senku. Just at the point where, you know, you guys really do start to get antsy and nervous. Um, you see them sneaking down the tunnel. Nice. Back towards you. Dude, Perrin's pretty quiet. <laughs> I didn't know we had it in the book. Perrin's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you're both a mate. You, you could both be ninjas. What did you learn? Oh, uh, they're chanting, then they're chant, they're repeating a name over and over. Let me guess, name... Le Mena Tempesta? No. No, actually. Oh. Panjal Kutra. Huh? Eh? Yeah. That's the name they're um, repeating. Angel Kutra. I don't know what it means. Angel? Angel Kutra. Angel? The yes. L? Put it in the general chat. Angel Kutra. <coughs> oh I gosh, have... that was not even close. I have no idea. Uh, Senku, you can roll me a history check at disadvantage. First, let me write this down. Okay, here we go. This is gonna suck, I just know it. It can't, wants... it can't get worse than... You, you can't learn less than you already know. Indeed. Forgets everything. Well, I rolled a twelve. Unfortunately, not enough. Unless In the case of oh, you're going to use the flash of genius. Yeah, might as well. All right, join me in the DM chat. Trying to think of what else I should add to the ship that I'm working on. I don't really have much room to add things to it. I love building tiny ships. 
back. I'll share my screen for a second while they're gone. Yeah, tiny little ship. <laughs> Except it actually has room inside for four passengers. Oh, nice. I love building these little ships that they are completely functional, have a little bit extra room than what they need, but are so, so tiny. Nice. Indeed. Like, this roof is only... They, they added new armor panels, so now I'm able to add, like, this super thin roof, which I could almost just do, like, window pane. <laughs> Hey, they're back. And they're not. <laughs> and they're back. Well, at least I am. I'm wondering if... Yeah, there he is. There he is. Yeah, I don't know how I shunted myself back into the DM chat. <laughs> but anyway. But you um, can see Senku thinking and thinking and thinking and finally it clicks. Borderline um, smoke is starting to come out of his ears. Yeah, and then it clicks through, and you hear him say, Panjel Kutra is not good. Uh, explain? Um, that's, at, as far as I can tell, it's the name of a Rakshasa, basically a tiger demon. Incredibly powerful and renowned artificer. That's, he, Panjel Kutra was incredibly powerful and renowned as an artificer, but also incredibly evil. And he was one of the five regions of the Demon Wastes. And they did was, mention the Demon Wastes as well. And was, and get this, he was killed by the guy, he was killed by Mira and her band of awesomeness. Which means I think they're trying to bring him back. Well, we can't have that done. No, it definitely cannot. There's Senku, you'll appreciate this, uh you'll appreciate this analogy. There's there's nothing on the other side of the equal sign. Why would a cult worshiping a tornado god want to bring back an artificer? Yeah. The connection there is non existent. <sighs> to say I wonder least. if I wonder if there's some item they need that this artificer can create to bring back their Lameda Tempesta? Maybe a wand? Don't can they have that happen? Nestor, did they mention anything else? <sighs> they mentioned the demon wastes. They mentioned that name. Not much. Anything you, anything you know can help us. I don't think so. So we're still missing a huge portion of the equation. They did mention the Blackthorn Conclave. Haven't we heard of those guys before? Uh, maybe in passing, but not next door. You can give me a history check. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, wait. I, I have that in my campaign notes. Um. Aren't those the guys that played with... 21? Uh, didn't Senku also hear about this? Rolled an 18, I got a 
or plus three. I, so I, I heard you. Uh, I heard you there, Nyaxor, but uh, Senku actually remembered something from the notes. I'll get to you in one second, uh, Thunder. Yeah, weren't those? Wasn't the black? Yes, you hear Senku say, "Wasn't the black? Wasn't the Blackthorn Conclave the guys who laid waste to that southeastern area near Nessa?" Yes. How? Huh? What? Thunder, please join me in the the DM chat. <laughs> Thunder's like, you do what now? I... Hello. Oh, you know, just south of, uh, just south and a little bit east of Nesta, there was a region of wasteland that used to be farmland before a group called the Blackthorn Conclave essentially salted the earth with magic. They prevented anything from growing. You now have enough of a you now have enough of a recollection to know what these guys are. The Blackthorn Conclave was a secret sect of evil druids that most druids have to, you know, sit and pray to recover their spells. Blackthorns, members of the Blackthorn Conclave get their spells back by doing that, but as they pray in nature, they destroy. Uh, like flowers wilt and die, the soil turns uh uh the, the soil becomes unsupportive of uh in the sort the soil becomes infertile. Uh water uh streams spoil and uh can't support can't even support fish. Okay, we cannot have this happen. <laughs> And with that, we can go back to the others. We need to stop these guys. Agreed. Before they st destroy this land. Agreed. Let's yeah, rock and roll. Definitely. What I, what I learned is when they do get their do their praying thing, whatever, get their spells back, they destroy the land. And the Black Corn um, Conclave, they're a band of old druids. Gotcha. You cannot have this happen. It's... I have a feeling, oh, they're, I have a feeling they're going to destroy this land, and I'm not going to have that. Neither am I. Oh, well, let's get in there and stop them. Let's wreck okay. some shop. Let's take our uh, what what is, it, what is it called? The attack of opportunity? Mm -hmm. No. Surprise round. Surprise round. Surprise round. Yep. So, as you guys uh, start running up. Um, something happens. That is never a good thing to have. No. Nope. Last thing I want is things happening. <laughs> All right. So you guys see 12 humanoids of various races, you know, cobalt, <sighs> bugbear, uh, kobolds, I should say, hobgoblins. Oh, kobolds, uh, fun. The errant uh, elf and dwarf uh, chanting in a circle. Uh, in the center is a man with uh, clad in obsidian black full plate wielding a glaive, and he is wield he, even, he's wielding it in one hand, but he's 
doing it almost like he's conducting. And then he spins around, sees you. His eyes go wide. Like, what uh, the and hell? He, uh, and he spins around. He flourishes the, uh, the glaive and says, Everyone, quickly, escape! Yeah, how about no? How about no? And we can roll initiative. And this twenty eight. Jeez. Does anyone want to boost to their initiative? Twenty two. Would love a boost to my initiative. Don't I have something for that? Uh, not that you can cast in. Not not that you can cast right now. Yeah, you have to do it before we roll. Damn. Ten. Oh well. And we have no advantage. You do not have advantage. I'm sorry. Twenty-two. It's not your fault. What are you apologizing for? You are absolutely fine. Should have cast it. It's all good. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. And Senku is bringing up the rear. But that's okay. I have a plan to gum them up. Okay. So, twenty-two. Die extort. Yeah. Keep them from leaving. Hold your initiative. I got a twenty-two. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so. I know Pippin has been Dex. Yep. Master. Cats. Eleven. Sky Cats. I love the fact that his eyes went wide and he went basically, oh shit. Yeah, he was not expecting you. You guys really thank uh, Perrin and Pippin for that. They, there was no way. There, even on a nat 20, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> on a nat 20, who wouldn't do what? On a nat 20, they couldn't on an act 20, they couldn't, uh, this guy couldn't have detected you. Nice. <laughs> nice. Good job, you two. So, covert ops. Gotta love them. With that, Perrin, you have first, uh, you have first shot with your initiative. Alright. Uh, keep them from running. Oh, that's true. They are trying to run away. Uh, how clustered are they? Uh, they're all in about a uh, 30 foot radius. Shit. Let's see <laughs> the radius of the spell. It's not like it's whip out all that much. <laughs> Twenty foot radius, so I'll make sure I'll try. I'll try to catch as many of them as I can while still letting people have access to get into melee without taking damage. I'm going to cast spike growth. Ooh. So I'm not. So they know it's that the terrain is now hazardous and also is difficult terrain. Okay. If they move, for every five feet they move, they will take 2d4 damage. Okay. Ooh, nice. So you catch, uh, you catch a good almost half of them in this. And that's just, it just happens. There's no, there's no save. It just. There is no save. Sweet. Okay. So, 
describe d describe how you do this. I mean, is it do you like does it a uh, does it manifest as like an arrow, uh, a magical arrow that you loose, or do you like put your arms out and point and then just spiky vines or? I don't really know how to describe it, but I know that the area that the twenty foot radius area now is covered in twists, twists and sprouts of hard thorns and spikes. Okay, and it. Into the, and without really looking at it, it looks normal, but you can tell that something's happened there, since you've literally watched this happen. Yep. Okay. So, you sort of reach into your small, reach into your component pouch and pull out, like, a seed. The seed glows bright, brilliant green, and you don't, you don't so much throw it as you just sort of uh you just sort of point and it flies it just flies forward hits the uh hits the exact spot that you that you were pointing at and it just sort of erupts in these uh thorns and brambles and burrs that quit, like immediately and instantly fill the area And does that take a whole round, or is that just... That's an action. And then, actually, I can't mark anybody, because as I said, that's an action and a spell. So that would be my turn. You're not going to make an athletics or acrobatics check to jump down? No, I'll just... I'll keep myself ready to... Start filling them with arrows on my next round. Okie dokie. And I've got a plan to help out with the escape. The now, escapees, I should say. Now, Pippin, it is your turn. All right. So, how far is the... Who's a threat? Who's a threat? Basically, uh, they all are. There's a well, bunch cultists that are sort of breaking into a run and scattering. Uh, but they're being slowed by... They, they've sort of stopped. You hear one of them like, whoa! As, as brambles like explode into existence <laughs> around them. Yeah, let's about... keep as few of them. Let's make sure none of them escape, or if they do escape, as few as possible. Where, where's the Mister Singer man who's flailing his axe around when we got here? Glaive, and he is right next to the center of this, uh, of this explosion of growth. Was he running? He was not. Ah. Then. Uh... Let's see here. Cut them all off. Cut them all off. Can a bonus action be used to pick up something that I dropped? If I do not move? I'd say yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my, my free action to drop my shield. Like I'll like set it down like on my legs so it's easy to grab. And then I'll pull out a wand from my back pocket and cast magic missile. Okay. Uh up to six times. So you're gonna spend six of the seven charges. Well, six is six. I already used one previously. So oh. I will roll D twenty. It's a five, it does not break. So you're going to roll 8d4 plus 8. 8d4 plus 8. Dang, that's a lot. 25. 25. He takes 25 damage. Indeed. And then I will, from a, a, my you know, bonus action, I'll pick back, uh, you know, I'll put away my wand and pick, pick up my shield. Okay. Like Good one enough. nice action. I'll let that go. Awesome. 
Is it just one person getting targeted, or basically just a him. whole mess? Just, just him, him so far. I don't want to hurt the little guys. You guys can handle them. I'll focus on the big <laughs> dude. With that, it's Nyxor. Alrighty. Remember, we don't want any of them to escape. Your erupting Earth would be perfect here. And I have even better. Ooh, do tell. I'm gonna cast. Uh. Wall of Fire. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be nasty and cast Wall of Fire. Okay. I was waiting. I was wondering when you were, uh, when that spell was going to show again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, they all, all need to take, uh, dexterity saves. Every single one of them. So when they reach it, um, am I to assume you're ringing the entire area, because you can trap every single one of these guys inside. Yeah, I could put them, pretty much put it right up to them, and they all have to take a dexterity save. Yep. And if they're, if they're gonna have to... Ex yeah, I'm gonna pretty much put them in it. Yeah. So you create a literal ring of fire. They fell into <laughs> a burning ring of fire. <laughs> I love that song. Down, down, They'll down, take 5d8 damage. Well, they're not taking anything yet because no one's actually close enough. Um, I cast it. Uh, I can cast it 120 feet. Fire. Yeah. So um, we have Spike Growth that's capturing almost half these guys. And then as they're all trying to scatter, you just sort of trace your your uh, uh, wispy, wispy flames ignite around your uh, ignite around your finger as you trace the area you want and starting and following your finger this uh, this shimmering red orange wall of flame <laughs> forms and uh and traps them all four guys <laughs> are you gonna roll individually or are you gonna just do it all at once like I said they're not the the wall of fire only does damage within like 15 feet of it and they're not close enough to take no one's close enough to take fire damage yet unless you're putting it within the spike growth will it hurt the spike growth or uh the short answer is i don't think so it doesn't say anything about being flammable. Okay, then I'm gonna go with no. Then I could, because I have a hundred, what, hundred and twenty feet. I could pretty much put them right on top of them, and they all okay. have to take deck saves. All right, so go ahead and roll your uh, <laughs> IP. Oh God! I... Spike growth is really mean, especially when it's combined with something like. Um, they... but it's not to be combined with. That is not what I wanted. It's pretty nasty combined with this. Yes. And how about <laughs> this? There you go. That that's, with web. that's the entire wording. Um, here's <laughs> the haste that's... prepared. Haste would be nice. Actually, <laughs> you don't necessarily want to stop them from moving because if they move, they take damage. If they stay put, they take damage. 
<laughs> 26 <laughs> damage. Okay. Bunch of them take 26. Bunch of them take 13. <laughs> All right. So this guy looks at you and just says, Interesting. Oh. I thought it yeah. he'd say something more like, Oh, oh. shit. No, not quite. Um, oh, you find me interesting. How nice. <laughs> yeah, is it interesting and quite annoying. He <laughs> sort of, you know, looks at his free hand and is like, You did get here slightly sooner than I expected. And he very he he performs the gesture very uh very casually, but you can tell like as he's casting this spell, he's putting an in a tremendous amount of effort into it. Look out. Everyone can make uh, actually, what kind of spell is this? I think it's a constitution save. Is it a cone of cold? It is. Oh, That's boy. Con. That is a con save. So, yeah, you guys can go ahead and make me a constitution save. 15. 20? 21. Wait, what did I do wrong? How did I get 50? <laughs> well, I know I failed that. I rolled a whole nine. I rolled a 21. Nice. And unless I took 43. Six damage. I'm going to succeed the Constitution save to keep my spell. Okay. I Thank you, see. Dice. Roll a nine to a nine against the spell, but a twenty-two against the concentration check. You said forty eight or something, Pip? Uh no, I said twenty one. Twenty one, okay. Uh, I was talking about the const the the concentration check. Uh, it might be forty six or Higher, I do believe. 46. I mean, you failed your save, right? I failed the save. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to say your spike growth is going down because you're taking 64. Oh! Holy shit! If anyone... And actually, then... I have, that's cold damage, so I do actually have absorb elements available. Because, holy shit, that's over half my health gone, otherwise. It's like... <laughs> so, does that actually affect the constitution uh, save? How much am I taking? Uh, you got a 20-something on the save? 21. I got a 16. Okay. So, Senku, you're taking 64. Nyaxor, you're taking 32. Um, yeah, could I'm I... Gonna, I'm gonna say fuck I'm gonna absorb that. elements on that. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm much, doing. Holy how much, shit. How much am I taking? What was you, what'd you get on your save? 21. 32 damage. I'm gonna uh, cast absorb elements myself if that's a first level spell. <laughs> I'm gonna cast GTFO. <laughs> This is where I wish I had my um, second wind still. Ow. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm casting that as a reaction. I'm Wait, who, who's 
<laughs> Who's giggling? Actually, no, forget. <laughs> Actually, yeah, um, it's either absorb elements or hellish rebuke, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Plus, if I did that, I could only hit one. Well, you're getting hit by one. I'm not going to do any good to anyone dead. Absorb elements would be better for me in this one. Fair enough. So does that absorb elements mean it actually lessens the constitution save? No, it just means you take uh, half of the damage you would have... So it uh, still taken. goes down. Yes. Damn. Nestor? I'm sorry, I couldn't help you out there. Hey, this was a big hit. Yeah. Huge hit. But that's Ow. okay. But that's okay. They still got the wall of fire, and more importantly, I got something special for that. Uh, well, they may still have the wall of fire. Uh, wait, does wall of fire require concentration? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, you passed your con save to take half damage, but you still need to make a uh, it might concentrate or make another con save for concentration at uh, DC 16. And yeah, because I absorbed elements, I do still have the spike growth, but holy shit. That hurt. I matched the DC by die, so 19. Okay. So your wall of fire is still up. The the spike growth is still up. Okay. Cool. They're basically like, holy crap, I don't know how I'm alive, but they're alive. And this guy just sort of begins wading through the uh, the spike growth and the wall of fire. But he still eats damage. Oh, he's eating damage. Doesn't look like he cares. So Perrin and uh, Nyaxor can go ahead and roll the uh, go ahead and roll your respective damage. How far is he moving? Um... He will be covering 15 feet. 15? So, three. I think he'll be taking up 14 damage. Okay. Now might be a good time for that sickening radiance. Okay. Did the wrong die here. <laughs> Gotta change these. Who's got sickening radiance? You. That would be you, Pippin. I do? Because uh, I only have two spell slots. I've already used them. That's the crystal! No, it's a spell he has. Yeah, that's a spell. Okay, My... let me rephrase that. You got, a, you got anything that crystal can do? Not really. It's been used up. All right. <laughs> huh? Sen's having a fun time with this. 27 damage. Okay. <laughs> Sen's over here like, yeah, yeah, I used up all the resources. I am... S yeah, I am very low on my resources. Including spells. But, uh... He starts walking, and he is, you know, just for cinematic purposes, as he's walking, he's swinging the glaive and cutting through the spike growth. And he, you see him stop for just a second, take a deep breath, close his eyes, and he just walks through the area of the uh, 
of the wall of fire and emerges on the other side. And he, I mean, his armor smoking. Uh, he looks singed. He looks burnt. There, there's you know, thorns and stuff sticking out of his face. And he, he just looks at you with uh, this. He just looks at you and tilts his head to the side a bit as if to say, is that it? Senku, you're up. Then right. come and fight us. So, this guy's obviously the biggest threat. However, there are still cultists in that wall of fire. So... I am going to lay down some more fuckery with them. And I am going to unleash... Actually, hold on. Now that I think about it, I we should... The, there's cultist soul in there. So, how far away is this guy from me? Uh, about 40 feet. Are there down and of, in front of you. Are there plenty of suspension bits? No. So there's not plenty of anchoring points? Not really. Damn. Well, there goes that option. Well... Guess there's nothing left to do than to. I mean, I could I could throw it down in the. Actually, no, that probably doesn't have many anchoring points either. I was thinking of casting a web into the area with the spike growth and the wall of fire. That's. I... That's not a bad idea. It wouldn't catch the big guy, but uh, it would certainly slow down the cultists. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's uh, sneer them up even... Let's befoul them even further. They just got hit with a fuck ton of webbing. Okay. So... This, uh... This, this guy... Takes the butt of his glaive, clang, bangs it onto the, uh... Bangs it onto the ground, and just sort of echoes... At, at, um... And... He raises hand, raises uh, his free hand, and says, "Hold." Uh -huh. Before this continues and results in needless death, perhaps, perhaps a parlay is in order. Have in mind. I have someone you want. I propose a prisoner exchange of sorts. Oh. Let, let us go. And we release her into your custody into your custody. And one of the cultists reaches in to a bag of holding and pulls out Lorenta. But Lorenta was with us. I thought she was dead. Well, she was, but we had her after we escaped with Bord um, after Bordana attacked us. We had her. Powerful magic does not require a body for resurrection. So they have a live Lorenta? Yes. She is bound, she is gagged, and she is she is squirming a bit. Insight? Go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna go for this too because honestly, I don't buy this one bit. It's 18? That's a 22. Okay. You guys got it. <laughs> 
Yeah. I I I don't need the roll. <laughs> or if you guys can tell, he seems he seems uh he, he seems good for his word. I mean, is it her though? What do we like? Is it actually her? Uh, uh make me make me a perception check. Twenty four. Twenty. Dirty or nat? Looks like her. Looks really like her. <laughs> it is her. <laughs> I'm still a little suspicious. And what do we trade back? Let us let us leave in peace. Release the hold on your spells and let us escape. Take off her gag so I can tell that it's really her. He looks at you, nods, and says, very well. And with the the flourish of his with a flourish, a precise flourish of his spear, he cuts the gag. What makes you say you're not going to fight us if we remove our spells? Well, they don't really have much to fight with. It's one person versus us and a bunch of low, like, just people who don't know how to fight running around chanting. He sort of lowers his nod and gets a slightly more menacing tone and says, You've seen what I can do. (laughs) <laughs> no actual spells. I could do the same spell. To so the same effect. And sleep, please. Okay. Um, why don't I, why don't I let uh, why don't I let Lady Lorenta explain? She is capable of doing the same thing. She Begrudgingly nods and says, yes, evoker wizards can over-channel a spell and make it do far greater damage than normal. <sighs> the first time we do it, the first time we do it in a day, it is harmless. Thereafter, it puts tremendous strain on our bodies. Uh, I think next we'll just be grudgingly dispel. You better dispel everything you got. Pip is definitely sheathing his sword. <laughs> I mean, they haven't really done anything. You have the web out. Are you dispelling your web? Senku, hello? I mean, it, I'm honestly not sure. I'm not sure what the moral choice. You guys is. incited her you in. Dispelled the web. You incited, and he's telling the truth. Just dispel it already. I will very begrudgingly dispel mine. Yeah, same here. That guy should I... not be let go. Yeah, same here, but Senku set, basically is giving a look that says if this goes pear shaped, we will basically give Senku. He Senku gives the rest of the party a look that says if this goes pear shaped, we are fighting. Yeah, think. Pip is like it's not going pear shaped because I'm not losing Lorenta. I'm not losing her either. So yeah, Senku is being very, very begrudging about this. What do you he... think? Naxor was very begrudging too. He doesn't want to. You guys <laughs> are so reluctant. Like the the spells don't just the spells don't just disappear. They like flicker a little bit and fade. Like the the web sort of collapses in in small pieces first. 
uh, until you relinquish your hold on them entirely. This guy flourishes his sword, flourishes his, uh, flourishes the glaive again, holds the blade right to Lorenta's throat. And says, we will stay here until my, uh, until my subordinates can ha have cleared the area. And you stand at a, a, a tense standoff for about three rounds. I'm, uh... Ugh. Doctor is standing very tense, like... Like, if anything happens, I'm grabbing Stormtooth and I'm slashing. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind I of. Imagine. Kind of, like, stance. Pippin... I, I... Pippin is at the slightest thought that he is going to hurt Lorenta, ready to t like if I could Same even prepare here, like, my action yeah. to teleport in to like tackle the dude. So, you guys hold these. I assume Perrin's got like an arrow knocked. Oh into yeah. And I and the last the, the last of these uh cultists fades from view and he says what a refreshing what a refreshingly cooperative attitude we've had a deal he lowers the glaive and he lowers the glaive and then he himself does a uh, does some somatic components and disappears we're gonna track. Uh, We're gonna regret this. I know it. Uh, <laughs> Loretta. Oh, thank Don't goodness worry. you're alive. Don't worry. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> thank goodness I am alive instead. I'm not that evil. I'd be so mad at you. <laughs> I'd be mad at you as a never like I hate you so much. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm an evil vindictive DM. You're, you're, you're a benevolent DM, but also a just DM. However, I'm guessing that something that something is at least still attached to these guys. Like, you would be able to identify these guys based on tears in their robes. You're assuming they don't have changes of clothes to blend in topside. Yeah, but we if, did enter a bit. We did enter quite a few of them. Not, not really. Not in any meaningful way. I mean, my fire pretty much got all of them, but... literally about half passed and half failed with that because it's almost 2 a.m. and Pat is fading fast. This is a good place to stop. I am, however, going to award you guys with a level. <laughs> so, congrats. You are level 11. Ooh, Ooh hey, this means I get something cool. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Also, uh, Sen, I made something. You made. I literally. I did. Uh. I did. I made I something wonderful. Made, when I assume you made something. I assume it's in Space Engineers. It is. I'm looking at it now. That is kind of nice looking. I'm really going to F A F. It's just easier to fly around in. Uh, uh, there we are. So, Pat, I know you're fading fast. Feel free to leave at any time. Yeah. It's just I'm so frustrated that we basically had to do that. <laughs> it's you're not you're you're not supposed to like it. It's just a thing that's uh, you know, I'm wondering happen. which one is the good choice. I don't think there was a good choice among them. 
There wasn't. There was a moral dilemma there. Oh yeah. Say, save somebody close. It was it was like that the whole thing, you know, the trolley problem. Save four people or save one person that you know. And the choice was get rid of that section of cultists and stop them from whatever they're doing and save ton thousands already, of people or slave already Loretta. stopped what they were doing. Well they're just gonna go do it again. And when they do, we'll find them. But uh, whole point is, is that it was either you know stop them now and save thousands of people, possibly, or save one person. But that one person means a lot to you. That was the moral dilemma. Kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I I must say that was. That was uh, well role played by everybody. <laughs> I gotta, I, I gotta keep tipping my hat to all four of you guys. You're, you, you guys role play better than you know most really skilled players that have been doing this for a decade plus. Uh, I that hate means that a I lot. One level in rogue so bad, but I can't change it. <laughs> I need what it gives me. <laughs> but seriously, uh, I have another die of damage now. <laughs> if it wasn't for that one level in rogue, I'd be getting my mystic arcanium. So how do I do this? It's two d eight. You take the higher of the two for uh, hit points. Add your con modifier to it, which is now four. All right. So roll two d eight. Add four. Um, yep. What happens if I get the same number twice? Then it's the same. It's that number plus your con modifier. So that's 11. So I'm now at 115. And okay. I took how much damage during that? 32? Yep. And when we level up, does everything go back to max? Our health, our spells? Health, yes. Spells, no. Okay. But it's not gonna. It's gonna be kind of a moot point because you're gonna have a long rest between now and the next little uh, yeah. thing. But gotta, we here's the thing: we will find them. I gotta figure do some oh. figuring out to see if there's. Uh, We're gonna be like Liam Neeson and Taken. Guess who gets transport via plant now? Nice. <laughs> yes, but here's the thing, Sen. We will. We will look for them. We will find them. And we will beat the snot out of them. <laughs> Keep yeah. telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> we will. We shall conquer. <laughs> yep, but I got the last level I wanted for the extra the damage. Is, they, they didn't actually get away with much because of the tornado sirens. That's true. You know, oh, man. You have to remember, we have the tornado sirens now. What you're going to do Far more than these cult than these cultists could have ever planned for. So not only did we save a whole bunch of people that we didn't know, but we still saved the one person that we did. Ah, I can't. I'm trying. So, to... Sorry. There's truth to that. As there's truth to that junkyard. Okay, I might have to have a have a talk with Sen to figure out if I could figure this out in any way possible, but I don't think there is any way. The issue <sighs> here is the cult was denied in two ways. They didn't get to resurrect, they didn't get to bring back their little buddy Panjol Panjol Kutra. They didn't get to do that. We stopped them at that. And, not only that, but in doing that, we also probably interrupted something regarding their weather phenomena. And, there was the tornado siren network, which that combined with Mira and Min South's warnings about heeding the sound of the siren probably meant we that the cult not only lost out on a whole bunch of people dying in that everyone took shelter because of the rousing performance at Nessa, but we also managed to save Lorenta. So in every single way, the cult lost. Uh, 
let's uh but well, let's do the celebrations for after we get Lorenta to safety and talk to her. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because I mean, they attacked. They attacked the academy for a reason. That that wall was blown out for a reason. Bourdain was there for a reason. To get under our skin. Probably more than that. But that's conversation. That that's a conversation best saved for next week because Mr. Pat is yeah. hey, getting very Pat. tired very quickly. Yep, and I got what I want done, which is my level of bare minimum I can do damage wise now is one d four plus two d six plus one d eight plus six damage. If I only if I don't use any charges on the crystal. And if I don't, and if I'm attacking an undamaged target or I've already used my Colossus Slayer. Also remember, you know, Storm, like everything, your legacy weapon, your your legacy items might get new stuff this, uh, this level. Like I think. Yes, yeah. I also get haste. Yeah, Wind Reaper can cast haste for you now. <laughs> Sadly, I don't get anything till 12th level. Oh, I could breathe. Unparalleled, paralleled fury, gaining the benefits. I wish I gained this at eleventh level. I would love to be able to fly. I I can breathe a number of times equal to my constitution. Oh my gosh, there might be a way. Oh my gosh, there would be a way. And the range of your breath weapon doubles. Yeah, next level is gonna be my, gonna be very nice because no more ammunition and damage type change. Uh, yeah, I'm really like you may not be able to hit the high ACs like uh, Pippin can, Pat, but uh, I'm I think Wind Reaper is probably my the favorite like one of the better legacy weapons I've designed. <laughs> I gotta... yeah, it's gonna be. I'm gonna have three bow attacks, or what is it? Well, this is if I don't even use action surge. If I action surge and haste, that's five bow attacks per round. I keep for that one round. I keep forgetting you have action surge, so you can. You have action surge and haste. Yeah. So action surge plus haste with. In bow form, that's five attacks in a round. Ver and it's six attacks in a round if I action surge in melee. Yeah. It will be disgusting. <laughs> that, and I also have the additional d4 damage that applies to every single roll. That's right, I forgot, you're brute. Yep. You're brute fighter. Very cool. So I've got the additional D4, and that one applies to everything unlike my Colossus Slayer. The Colossus Slayer is once per round on a damaged target. But that's even more powerful because that's a D8 of damage. So, yeah. But I'm going to get myself to bed. Yeah, sleep we well. got one, buddy. Sticking around. Good night, bud. Yep. Good night. You had fun before you go, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Glad. And I think I know a way to do what I want to do. What are you trying to do? I, I want to get rid of my level in Rogue. Okay. Because the only reason I have a level in Rogue, the only reason I have one as of, as of the last time I switched was because I wanted um, expertise. Right. Um, because I wanted to keep stealth and persuasion. Um. So, and I don't know why my... There we go. I my pages enough. are taking 110 years to load. So, I get Expertise, Sneak Attack, and Thieves Can't for one level of Rogue. Which is insanely amazing and super powerful. Because 1d6 damage. Uh, thieves Can't, which I never use. And uh, I don't even think about Thieves Can't, honestly. And Expertise, which is the biggest thing, is having Expertise. Um, so I'm I have... off, guys. See ya. 
Take See you. Have a good right. one. So I have two options. One, I keep Rogue and I stick with a level 10 Warlock and, uh, you know, just enjoy it. Or I can look into getting rid of that level in Rogue and finding other ways to give myself acrobatics, sleight of hand, and stealth. Um, so I'm looking at backgrounds and I'm looking f- so I'm looking for a background that I could use and I'm looking for a feat I could use. So I already um I'm looking at backgrounds. I chose noble because I was basing the build off of um Frodo. I believe it was. It was in Frodo or Bilbo. Um but I'm going to look at a couple of the backgrounds and I'm going to use Warlock. Warlock gives me two skills. So I have Deception and Persuasion because of my Eldritch thing, Beguiling Influence. Um, I have Perception from Rogue. And then, let's see, Noble. As I recall, I let you swap one skill for another. You let me swap one for Arcana. Okay. So that's why I'm trying to figure out which one it was. Um, but if I if I get rid of the two levels I put into dexterity and bring my dexterity down to 18, I can get the skilled feat. Which will sacrifice my dexterity, but give me the skills I need and my level in warlock that I'm wanting. I have no objection to this. It'll so, make you easier to hit. No, it wouldn't. Oh, because okay. I don't oh, use light armor. Armor master. And I don't use light armor either. Right. That's that's what that's another like I'm because I'm a hex blade. I don't use light armor. I use medium. Okay, but it will, noble. it will reduce your it'll reduce your deck saves. It'll reduce your initiative. Make you and it will. It'll make you slightly easier to affect the stuff. <laughs> so it ends up helping you a little bit. <laughs> do not have any problem with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, it looks like uh, we swapped out Persuasion on the Noble class. So I had History and Arcana instead of History and Persuasion. That's cool. Um, that's what we did before. But I'm going to look at I'm gonna look at a, different, a couple different backgrounds because I want to try to get uh, like Stealth and all the thing is, is I don't have expertise in stealth anymore if I do that. So I want to look at a couple of the different backgrounds and see if I can't get stealth from a background and then get the expertise, or I think it's skill expert feat instead. I was about to say, instead of the skilled feat, the skill expert is a good one. You get, I think you get an ability score increase, you get a, uh, you get a proficiency in a skill, and you get expertise in another skill. Yeah, and I could put one of those into intelligence because my intelligence is pretty low. Um, wait a second. Didn't we get like a thing of intelligence at some point? Uh, yes, you do have a headband of intellect. Okay. It sets your intelligence to 19. That it does. But it does require attunement. Yep. And that's probably why I don't have it on right now. (laughs) 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 Because, uh, you know... Pippin would kind of have to drop his cloak of protection, which would lower his armor score, and that's something he probably doesn't want to do. I am glad that turned out the way it did. The game? That uh, that ho- that hostage negotiation. <laughs> just, wouldn't that have been something? Just let her die. <laughs> Well, no, I, I never expected you to do that. I expected you to, you know, start uh, the alternative way that that was going to end was go- would be on a uh, far more intense cliffhanger, wherein uh, arguing, you would have been arguing back and forth, maybe not lowered your spells, and uh, this guy would have said, that's all right. I was just stalling for time. And uh, 
you would have turned around and you would have uh, had to fight uh, had uh, had to fight for Don. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, oh that is so bad. no! Yeah, but getting to level ten. Uh, that's making my uh, my hex blades curse a lot more powerful. In level eleven, I get my level six arcanium. I have no clue how it works, but we'll find that out. You get a uh, you get a single. It's basically you get a single spell slot of six leveler of of six level, and you can use it on. Uh, number of spells or you could if you wanted take one of your normal spells and upcast it using the arcanum slot my uh D D wiki dot is dying i can't even <laughs> load the page Oof. i can load other pages not wiki dot D D backgrounds that was a that was fun for me to run. <laughs> I bet. I enjoyed that. That was crazy. Web. Like, I feel bad putting you guys through through stuff to get you to squirm, but you know, it makes for good storytelling. Well, what does Noble give me? I gotta check that again. Noble gave me any language... Um, it was real. I love that. That I loved that one. It was really good. The game. You'll be interested to know. Um, Kurgu did make good on his promise. Really, the woman who uh, th that 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 strikingly beautiful woman that healed you. Oh, just sort of appeared out of nowhere and disappeared just as quickly. Yeah. You time by just, you know, banishing the storm that was building. Who was that? That was uh, a woman by the name of Sister Justine. She was the. Uh, she Dragon was Dragon Age of... Inquisition. No. 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 Never played the game, actually. Now, Sister Justine is the most brokenly overpowered cleric I've ever seen put to paper. <laughs> Jeez. Run. She is run by the man who taught me everything I know about DMing, Pete Carolla. Well, he chose a good name, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> I love Dragon Age. The, uh... You remember the the phrase, like the meme phrase floating around, like there's an app for that? <laughs> yeah. Well, in the edition that Justine is from, there's a spell for that, and it's usually on the cleric list. <laughs> <laughs> like, perfect example. I put together, like, the first encounter she's in, I put together this... Uh, Bar room. I put together this barroom brawl, but it's it's not a normal barroom brawl because it's a barroom brawl of, um, you know, high level bruisers. That is, I mean, it was supposed to be this big epic fight for the entire party. Yeah. So it gets to Justine's turn, and Justine's like, "I cast Firestorm on who? Uh oh, it's." Two ten foot squares per character level per caster level, so everybody. How much damage does it do? Uh one d6 per caster level caps out at 20 dice, so 18 dice to everybody. Oh, they have to make a reflex save. Oh, it's DC 18 plus my wisdom is like 28. Good grief. Now this is Jeez. a different this is a different edition where numbers were a little bit higher. Um, but uh, yeah, that 
and, and it would routinely happen like that. I'd have this big, awesome encounter plan. I spent hours building stuff. Gets to Justine, one spell, and the the fight's over. Shit, great. Goodness. I the enemies of the party learned to fear Justine. Jeez. <laughs> So yeah, Sister Justine is disgusting. Man, <laughs> that's crazy. So I've actually found a background. Wait. Hmm. I don't know if you're up for it, but maybe tiny bit of destiny if you want to play uh three. I'm fixing up my character sheet, but maybe it is. It's well, it's only two a.m. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see once I finish up my character sheet. What do you plan on doing, son? Uh, I was actually going to do a little bit of looking around at my uh, doing a, a little bit of looking around and saving the character sheet for tomorrow. I'm just going to chat with you guys for another fifteen twenty minutes and then call it a night. I'm. I'm not too far behind Pat. I'm fading pretty quick, but at the same time, I am still kind of on cloud nine with how well that turned out. That uh, was pretty quick. And way to piss off Lametta Tempesta. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did not that was him. I thought it was just some cloud with eyes. <laughs> well, every single time little peek under the hood every single time you've seen that you've seen a small fraction or shard of lametta's consciousness and power oh oh i did not know that yeah (laughs) but they've been you know the tiniest meanest meagerest fractions of uh of his presence so you've been at you've got like it's stuff that's been tangible and it, it, it's it's and it, it's little enough that it's tangible and quantifiable and can be disrupted <laughs> interesting so that and then i get to pick 